Hello everyone, welcome to Tech with Shaping Pixel. We are bringing you free cloud certification crash course. This time we are bringing AWS certified cloud practitioner course, which is also CLF C02. The best way to gain this certification is to complete these crash course and practice the exams questions provided. This video is specially curated to help you pass the AWS certified cloud practitioner exam and is ideal for anyone who is looking to learn about the various compute services in AWS in preparation for the exam. This fundamental certification is designed for individuals with exposure to AWS and its services, even if they are not in a technical role. Key exam domains, the certification covers four domains, cloud concepts, 24%, Security and Compliance 30%, Cloud Technology and Services 34%, Billing, Pricing and Support 12%. Each domain includes task statements outlining required knowledge and skills. Cloud Concepts These domain accounts for 24% of the exam content and focuses on four key areas. Define the benefits of the AWS Cloud, Identify design principles of the AWS cloud. Understand the benefits of and strategies for migration to the AWS cloud. Understand concepts of cloud economies. Security and compliance. These domain accounts for 30% of the exam content and focuses on four components of cloud security. Understand the AWS shared responsibility model understand AWS cloud security governance and compliance concepts, identify AWS access management capabilities, identify components and resources for security. Cloud technology and services. These domain accounts for 34% of the exam content and has eight key areas of interest. Define methods of deploying and operating in the AWS cloud. Define the AWS global infrastructure. Identify AWS compute, database, network, and storage services. Identify AWS artificial intelligence and machine learning services and analytics services. Identify services from other in-scope AWS service categories. Billing, pricing, and support. These domain accounts for 12% of the exam content and accesses you in three areas. Compare AWS pricing models. Understand resources for billing, budget, and cost management. Identify AWS technical resources and AWS support options. Ever wondered what cloud computing really is? So let's break it down. So before understanding cloud computing, it's important to grasp virtualization. It allows multiple virtual machines to run on one physical server, sharing hardware resources through a hypervisor. This maximizes the power of cloud computing. So cloud computing is a rapidly growing technology offering a remote virtual pool of on-demand shared resources, including compute, storage, database, and network services. It's changing the landscape of how many companies operate with significant business and technical advantages. So let's deep dive into core foundation services. In cloud computing, core foundation services include compute, storage, database, and network resources. Understanding these will help identify what services to move to the cloud. So cloud computing is a game changer offering scalable on-demand resources. Stay tuned for more on cloud deployment models. So let's understand different cloud deployment models. The three main cloud deployment models are public, private, and hybrid. The public cloud model offers shared infrastructure accessible over the internet for public usage. It's maintained by the cloud vendor providing flexibility and scalability. On the other hand, the private cloud is a privately hosted, managed, and owned by individual companies 
offering greater control and security. In a private cloud, all resources are isolated and in the control of one organization. So the private cloud is also called the internal or corporate cloud. Lastly, the hybrid cloud combines both public and private clouds, allowing for seasonal burst, traffic or disaster recovery. It extends the logical internal network of the private cloud, offering the benefit of both models. So let's have a quick overview of the key characteristics of cloud computing. So on-demand resourcing. Cloud computing offers on-demand resourcing, meaning that the resources are immediately available for allocation, eliminating the need for wait for hardware to be ordered, installed, and configured. Scalability. With cloud computing, you have the ability to rapidly scale your environment's resources, both up and down and in and out, depending on your requirements and demands, of your application and services. Economy of scale, thanks to virtualization technology, cloud computing provides an economy of scale resulting in exceptionally low resource cost compared to traditional hosting. Flexibility and elasticity. Cloud computing offers huge flexibility and elasticity, allowing you to fully customize your environment using only the resources required. Utility-based metering. Many cloud services operate on a utility-based metering system, meaning you only pay for the resources you use. So let's dive into cloud service models. The three main cloud service models are software as a service, platform as a service, and infrastructure as a service. Each model offers varying levels of manageability and customization over your solution. Software as a Service, or SaaS, provides widely distributed and accessed applications like Google's Gmail. These applications are fully managed by the provider and accessed over the internet, offering minimal customization from the user's perspective. Platform as a Service, moving up the customization scale, Platform as a Service, or PaaS, offers a greater level of management and control it provides an application framework on top of the operating system, allowing developers to focus on creating new apps. And lastly, Infrastructure as a Service, or IaaS, allows the highest level of customization. Users can configure their own portion of the cloud, including virtual networks and operating systems, while the underlying host is managed by the vendor. Let's dive into some of the common use cases of cloud computing and how enterprises are leveraging these technology. Migration on the cloud. One of the major use cases of cloud computing is migrating production services from on-premises solutions to the cloud. With the benefits of scalability and cost effectiveness in mind, many businesses are choosing to move their existing production services to the public cloud. Traffic bursting. During peak season, the public cloud can be used to scale networking resources to manage additional traffic. This means you only pay for the extra infrastructure when you need it, making it a cost-effective solution for handling fluctuation traffic. Backup and disaster recovery. The built-in resiliency and durability of public clouds make them a great solution for backup and disaster recovery needs. With access to unlimited storage space and cost-effective data management lifecycle policies, cloud computing is becoming a popular choice for enterprises. Web hosting. Many organizations are opting to host their web services on the cloud due to its ability to load balance across multiple instances and scale up and down quickly based on traffic demands. So let's dive into cloud computing infrastructure. Location. In an on-premises data center, infrastructure is housed on-site and across multiple locations for residents. Similarly, public cloud providers have regions with at least two data centers in different geographic locations, ensuring high-speed interconnectivity and data transfer. Physical security. Public cloud vendors are responsible for stringent security controls and certifications, ensuring the physical security of the data center. Mechanical and electrical infrastructure, the responsibility for implementing capacity 
residency and testing for mechanical and electrical infrastructures in the data center lies with the vendor, removing these burden from the end user. Network infrastructure in the public cloud networking operates at a software level, allowing the implementation of control services and configuration to simulate the effects of physical network components. Servers and storage. Cloud vendors offer services repl replicating the functions of servers and storage in on-premises data centers with added advantages such as scalability and durability. The public cloud environment easily translate on-premises data center solutions offering significant advantages and benefits. Let's explore the benefits of cloud computing for organizations. On-demand resourcing. One of the key advantages of cloud computing is on-demand resourcing. This means that when you need to provision a resource within the cloud, it's almost immediately available to you to allocate where and when you need it. This alleviates the lengthy process of sourcing additional resources for your infrastructure, providing almost instant access to a resource that you have selected and configured via a series of options. Scalability, cloud computing offers the ability to rapidly scale your environment's resources both up and down and in and out depending on your requirements and demand of your applications and services. This is only possible because of the on-demand resourcing of the cloud. Economy of scale. Due to the huge scale of resources public cloud offering provide, you benefit from exceptionally low compute storage and network cost compared to traditional hosting. Public cloud providers can make use of these when buying infrastructure in huge scales, passing on the savings to you. Flexibility and elasticity. Cloud computing offers huge flexibility and elasticity to your design approach, allowing you to deploy different resources and services within minutes or seconds. This flexibility is often coupled with automation, ensuring your infrastructure will always deliver great service to your customers. Utility-based metering. With many cloud services, you only pay for what you use. This means you only pay for resources when you are using them, similar to paying for electricity when you use it. Shared infrastructure. Hosts within the cloud are virtualized, allowing for shared infrastructure, which significantly reduces the amount of physical hardware required, resulting in cheaper cost for you. So let's dive into advantages of cloud computing for businesses. The cloud offers a new wave of life to your businesses and its architecture, providing new ways of working, deployment and automation. It presents a massive potential within your businesses to innovate and take advantage of new services and technologies. For example, serverless computing can be a game changer, allowing you to focus solely on your code. These can lead to faster production release and innovation, helping you bring new products and applications to market more quickly. The cloud also helps businesses reduce their carbon footprint, making it a huge plus point as a differentiator in leading change for the better. Additionally, it allows for remote working, reducing cost and increasing the scope for talent sourcing. Furthermore, it reduces business risk such as data durability and product risks, while making the business more dynamic and efficient. Utilizing the cloud can open up access to data and services for authorized third-party vendors, providing significant benefits and leading to a change in business strategy, making your organization stronger within the market. Let's dive into the world of AWS accounts and the services they house. Account management, AWS services are housed within an account, which can be a master payer account or a linked account. AWS organizations and other services can be used to manage accounts within AWS. Reserved instances and savings plans. Reserved instances, RI, 
are a commitment to use a cloud resource for a specific period in exchange for a discount rate. Savings plans SP are similar but more flexible. They can only be applied to compute usage. Instance types and sizes. AWS supports a variety of instance types, families, generations and sizes. For example, an instance like M5A 4x large belongs to the M family, fifth generation, A for AMD chips set and four into large size. Tags and governance. Tags are metadata attached to AWS resources providing contextual information. They can be used for automation, cost division and governance policies. Console and region. The AWS console is a web-based portal for managing accounts and accessing services. AWS also has the concept of regions and availability zones, which are essential for disaster recovery and performance. So whether it's managing accounts, understanding reserved instances are utilizing tags, AWS offers a wide array of tools and services for cloud management. Let's dive into the world of DevOps and related concepts in AWS. Let's explore the key terms and practices that are shaping the landscape of software development and operations. DevOps is all about breaking down traditional silos between developers and operators of computer systems. It's about collaboration, consistency, efficiency, and automation in software delivery. By combining teams and practices, DevOps aims to revolutionize and the way software is developed and deployed. Enterprise Architecture EA provides the blueprints for building and maintaining systems to achieve business goals. Like physical architects, EA groups outline the structure of systems, the software concept to be used, and the desired end. The lift and shift. Lift and shift migration involves moving applications from on-premises data center to public clouds. While it's a quick method, it may lead to increased cost and operational challenges due to the lack of modification for cloud native services. Workload refers to an application or software system running on a computing platform. It's the backbone of traditional and cloud-based systems defining the resources needed to run applications efficiently. On-premises and right-sizing. On-premises refers to company-owned data center space, while right-sizing optimizes virtual resources to match workloads efficiency, minimizing waste and cost. Agile. Agile project management is characterized by short phases of work, frequent assessment of priorities, and incremental development of products or software. It's all about adaptability and continuous enhancement. That's a wrap on our journey through DevOps and related concepts. Stay tuned for more insights. Let's dive into the world of cloud and finance terminology. Amortization. Amortization means retiring a payment of capital gradually over time on a schedule which reflects the benefits the capital provides in each period. It's like depreciation, but it typically applies to the retirement of cash payments. Variable cost. Variable cost are costs that vary according to the business value it supports. For example, a company hosting website would need to pay for more computers to host more websites, making the cost per website a variable cost. Upfront charges. Upfront charges for reserved instances are saving plans can be purchased with a full upfront payment, a partial upfront payment plus a reduced periodic charge or with no upfront charge. The upfront charge may be amortized over the life of the RI. OPEX are operating Expenditure is a category of business expense made in a specific accounting period which provides benefits only in that accounting period. Purchasing on-demand cloud services is considered an operating expenditure. ROI, 
Return on investment is the amount of profit from an investment made, usually expressed as a percentage of the original total cost invested. Let's dive into the world of well-architected framework in AWS. The well-architected framework is a comprehensive document provided by AWS, offering best practices and lessons learned for all customers. It's organized around six pillars, security, reliability, operational excellence, performance efficiency, cost optimization, and sustainability. The goal of the well-architected framework is to access and improve AWS architecture implementation by providing a catalog of questions around each pillar. These helps in understanding the business impact of design decisions and evaluating architecture using a consistent set of best practices. The framework is not about implementing details or architectural patterns, but rather a set of questions to help evaluate architecture. It addresses key areas such as protecting data and systems, using compute resources efficiently, eliminating unneeded expenses, running workloads with automation, and reducing resource utilization. The six pillars include security, performance efficiency, cost optimization, operational excellence, sustainability, and reliability. Each pillar addresses specific aspects of architecture and best practices for AWS implementation. So in summary, the well-architected framework is a valuable resource developed by AWS experts to help evaluate architecture and ensure adherence to best practices across six critical categories. Components that make up the AWS global infrastructure. Availability zones, regions, edge locations, regional edge caches, local zones, wavelength zones, and outpost. So let's dive into each component separately. AWS Availability Zones are the physical data centers of AWS where compute, storage, network, and database resources are hosted. It's important to note that a single AZ is not equal to a single data center. In fact, multiple data centers form a single AZ. Each AZ is geographically located within the same area, linked by highly resilient and low latency connections. These connections are used by AWS services to replicate data for high availability and resilience purposes. High availability and resilience. Utilizing resources across multiple AZs within a region allows you to create highly available and resilient applications and services. By architecting your solutions to utilize resources across more than one AZ, you ensure minimal or no impact to your infrastructure in case of an AZ failure. It's always a recommended best practice to make use of at least two AZs in a region to maintain high availability of your infrastructure. Let's dive into the concepts of regions and how they impact your cloud infrastructure. A region is a collection of availability zones that are geographically located close to one another. AWS has deployed them across the globe to allow its worldwide customers base to take advantage of low latency connections. Each region will act independently of the other and will contain at least two availability zones. Selecting the right region is a crucial for optimizing latency responses times for your customers. It also allows for compliance with regulations, laws, and governance related to data storage. Plus, utilizing multiple regions creates a level of high availability crucial for business continuity. At the time of publishing this video, there are currently 32 regions and 102 availability zones with four additional regions and 12 additional AZs planned. It's important to note that not all AWS services are available in every region. So understanding which service are available varies key. So when it comes to architecting your cloud infrastructure, choosing the right region is a decision 
that can significantly impact the performance, compliance and availability of your services. So let's dive into the role of edge locations. Edge locations are AWS sites strategically deployed in major cities and highly populated area worldwide. They are not used to deploy main infrastructures like EC2 instances or VPCs, but rather by AWS services such as CloudFront and Lambda Edge to catchy data and reduce latency for end user access. So the benefits are by leveraging Edge locations as a global content delivery network, AWS ensures that end users accessing your services experience re reduced latency. For example, when a user accesses a website hosted on EC2 instances and S3 from Europe, they are redirected to their closest edge location in Europe, significantly reducing latency. So the next time you access a website or app, remember the role of AWS edge locations in delivering a seamless and fast user experience. AWS global infrastructure is truly at the forefront of optimizing digital experiences. So let's dive into AWS Regional Edge Cache. In November 2016, AWS introduced the Regional Edge Cache, a pivotal addition to their infrastructure. Unlike individual edge locations, the Regional Edge Cache has a larger cache with retaining data that has expired at the edge locations. So the benefits of regional edge cache, this means that when the data is requested at an edge location and is no longer available, the regional edge cache steps in, reducing latency by serving the cached data instead of retrieving it from the original servers. Experience faster, more efficient content delivery with AWS regional edge cache. So let's dive into local zones. In 2022, Amazon launched its first 16 local zones, strategically positioned near highly populated area without an AWS region nearby. These zones provide ultra low latency and cater to data residency requirements. AWS local zones are currently available in 33 metropolitan areas with 19 more planned for the future. They are seamlessly connected to a parent region enabling access to all other AWS services via a secure, dedicated, high-speed connection. In August 2023, AWS introduced dedicated local zones offering fully managed infrastructure for exclusive use by specific customers or communities. These zones are ideal for mission-critical and sensitive workloads, especially in sector with strict governance controls. Experience the power of AWS local zones and dedicated local zones for your resource deployment and data residency needs. So let's introduce AWS Wavelength zones. Much like AWS local zones, AWS Wavelength zones place core AWS services closer to large end user bases and are connected to a parent region via a secure, dedicated high-speed connection. However, that sets Wavelength zones apart is that they are embedded within 5G mobile broadband networks and are deployed within the data centers of large telecommunications providers. So the benefits of AWS Wavelength zones are by deploying AWS resources such as VPC subnets, EC2 instances and EBS volumes to an AWS Wavelength zone, developers can offer ultra low latency and increased reliability for 5G applications such as live video streaming and interactive gaming. This is achieved by reducing the number of network hopes and eliminating the need for any traffic to traverse the public internet. So currently AWS Wavelength zones are available through Verizon in the United States, KDDI in Japan, SK Telecom in South Korea, Vodafone in the UK and Germany, and Bell in Canada. So experience the power of AWS Wavelength Jones and take your 5G applications to the next level. AWS Outpost, bringing the capabilities of the AWS Cloud to your on-premises data center. 
AWS outputs bring the same hardware used by AWS within their data centers to your on-premises data centers, allowing you to use native AWS services, including EC2, ECS, EKS, S3, RDS, and EMR on-premises. Outposts can be connected to AWS using either a direct connect or VPN connection, and they are fully managed, eliminating the need for patch management and software updates. Experience the power of AWS in your own data center with AWS Outpost. Let's dive into computer services in AWS. Elastic Cloud Compute EC2, Elastic Container Services ECS, Elastic Container Registry ECR, Elastic Container Service for Kubernetes EKS, Elastic Beanstalk, AWS Lambda, AWS Batch, Amazon Lightsail. So let's see what is compute. Compute resources are the brains and processing power required by applications and systems to carry out computational tasks via a series of instructions. These includes common server components like CPUs and RAM. In AWS, there are various services and features that offer compute power from hundreds of EC2 instances to serverless AWS Lambda functions. These resources can be consumed in different quantities and for different length of time, depending on your business requirements. Let's dive into the world of Amazon EC2. Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud or EC2 is a fundamental compute service within AWS allowing you to deploy virtual servers within your environment. Today, we will explore the key components of the EC2 service. Amazon Machine Images. So we have machine, Amazon Machine Images or AMIs. These are templates of pre-configured EC2 instances, enabling you to quickly launch new instances based on the defined configurations with a wide range of AMIs available, including those from the AWS Marketplace and Community AMIs. You have plenty of options to choose from. So let's talk about instance types. These define the size of the instance based on parameters like CPUs, memory, and storage from general purpose to storage optimized. There's a variety of instances families to cater to different performance needs. Moving up to the purchasing options, AWS offers on-demand instances, spot instances, reserved instances, and on-demand capacity reservations. Each option is designed to optimize cost and suit different deployment scenarios. Lastly, we will touch on EC2 tenancy. By default, instances run with shared tenancy, but dedicated tenancy options like dedicated instances and dedicated hosts are available for specific security and compliance needs. And that's a wrap up on our introduction to Amazon EC2. Stay tuned for more insights into the world of AWS. Let's see an overview of the Amazon EC2 container service, also known as Amazon ECS. Amazon ECS allows you to run Docker enabled applications packaged as containers across a cluster of EC2 instances without the need to manage a complex cluster management system. The service abstracts the burden of managing your own cluster management system by passing that responsibility over to AWS, especially through the use of AWS Fargate. When launching your ECS cluster, you have the option of two different deployment models, a Fargate launch and an EC2 launch, each with its own set of benefits and use cases. So monitoring is taken care of through the use of AWS CloudWatch, which will monitor metrics against your containers and your cluster. The cluster is dynamically scalable meaning you can start your cluster as a single small instance, but it can dynamically scale to thousands of larger instances. Amazon ECS provides a powerful and flexible solution for deploying and managing containerized applications, allowing you to focus on building great applications and deploying them across your scalable cluster. So introduction to AWS Elastic Container Registry or ECR. This service provides a secure location to store and manage your Docker images, 
allowing for easy distribution and deployment across your applications. The ECR consists of several key components, including the registry, authorization token, repository, repository policy, and image. The registry is where you can host and store your Docker images, and it comes with the default URL with your AWS account. To access your registry, your Docker client needs to be authenticated as an AWS user using on authentication token. This token is obtained by running the get login command using the AWS CLI. Access to your registry and images can be controlled via IAM policies and repository policies, allowing for tougher security controls. You can assign permissions to each repository controlling actions such as push and pull. So let's dive into the world of EKS, Elastic Container Service for Kubernetes. So Kubernetes is an open source container orchestration tool designed to automate, deploy, scale, and operate containerized applications. It's container runtick agnostic, meaning it can run Rocket and Docker containers. With EKS, AWS provides a managed service allowing you to run Kubernetes across your AWS infrastructure without having to take care of provisioning and running the Kubernetes management infrastructure in what's referred to as the control plane. The AWS account owner only need to provision and maintain the worker nodes. The control plane schedules containers onto nodes and tracks the state of all Kubernetes objects. In EKS, AWS is responsible for provisioning, scaling, and managing the control plane. Worker nodes are the responsibility of the customer and run as on-demand EC2 instances. To start using the EKS service, you will need to create an EKS service role, an EKS cluster VPC, install kubectl, and the AWS IAM authenticator. Create your EKS cluster, configure Quebec TCTL for EKS, provision and configure worker nodes, and configure the worker node to join the EKS. Your EKS cluster and worker nodes are now configured and ready for you to deploy your applications with Kubernetes. Now let's dive into overview of AWS Elastic Beanstalk. So Elastic Beanstalk is an AWS managed service that simplifies the process of deploying provisioning, monitoring, and scaling a production environment to run web applications. It automatically handles the provisioning and deployment of necessary AWS resources, such as EC2 instances, auto-scaling groups, RDS database instances, and elastic load balancers. Once your application is up and running, you can continue to support and maintain the environment just as you would with a custom-built environment outside of Elastic Beanstalk. It supports a variety of platforms and programming languages, including containerized applications using Docker, making it a flexible service for DevOps. Elastic Beanstalk provides a simple, effective, and quick solution for deploying web applications, making it an ideal service for developers and engineers. The service itself is free to use, but you will be charged for any resources that Elastic Beanstalk creates on your application's behalf, such as EC2 instances and applications load balances. Elastic Beanstalk application consists of environments, versions, and environment configurations, each with specific roles and functionalities. When creating a new environment, you must specify an environment tire based on your web application functionality choosing between a web server environment tire and a worker environment tire. The process for deploying and managing an application using Elastic Beanstalk involves configuring an environment, specifying the environment tire, providing application information, and configuring network and database settings. Let's dive into the world of AWS Lambda. To truly grasp serverless compute, we must first understood the traditional server setup. Imagine the freedom of focusing solely on your code and business logic without the burden of infrastructure, maintenance, and administration. AWS Lambda functions 
consists of three key parts the input the function itself and the output your function represents your business logic and can be configured with important details like permissions and compute power with aws lambda you have the flexibility to choose from a variety of runtimes including java go powershell node.js c sharp python and ruby custom runtime support is also available for languages not natively supported your lambda function can be invoked through various methods such as the console sdk http endpoints are triggers from other aws services once triggered your function can make calls to downstream resources like dynamodb and sns when it comes to cost you'll only pay for the resources you use based on the number of requests duration of code execution and the allocation compute power aws lambda offers a seamless cost effective solution for running your application code embrace the power of serverless compute with aws lambda AWS Batch AWS Batch is designed to handle batch computing workloads that require a large amount of compute power spread across a cluster of resources. It's ideal for tasks like training machine learning models and conducting large scale data analysis. With AWS Batch, you can seamlessly create a cluster of compute resources that's highly scalable and takes advantage of the elasticity of AWS. AWS handles all the provisioning, monitoring, maintenance and management of your clusters, saving your time and resources. AWS Batch consists of jobs, job definition, job queues and compute environments. These components work together to define, schedule and execute batch computing workloads efficiently. That's a quick overview of AWS Batch. Thank you for joining us and best of luck with your continued learning. Amazon LightSail. Amazon LightSail is a virtual private server or VPS backed by AWS infrastructure designed to be simple, quick and very easy to use at a low price point for small scale use cases. You can run multiple LightSail instances together, connect it to other AWS resources and access it either via the AWS console or directly to the LightSail homepage. To create a new instance, simply select your region, platform, blueprint, launch script, key pair, and instant plan. It's that simple. Once your instance is up and running, you have a number of management and monitoring options, including connect, metrics, snapshots, storage, networking, domains, tags, history, and delete. Amazon LightSail provides lightweight, cost-effective solution for small projects and use cases. So thanks for joining us for this quick introduction to Amazon Light Sale. So let's carry on. So AWS Outpost. This service is designed to bring the capabilities of the AWS cloud to your on-premises data center, offering a consistent hybrid cloud experience. Organizations may choose to adopt a hybrid cloud approach due to reasons such as latency, security, and governance impact requirements. Outpost allow you to run AWS services such as ECS, EKS, S3, RDS and EMR on premises. It also supports EC2 with a wide range of instance types available as well as migration and disaster recovery scenarios that leverage cloud and cure. Additionally, Outpost supports VMware cloud on AWS creating a secure, flexible, and scalable hybrid cloud infrastructure model for your organization. You can order outposts through the AWS Management Console, selecting from different compute and storage options. It's important to note that to place an order, you must have either an enterprise or enterprise on-ramp support plan with AWS. And because AWS outposts are fully managed, you do not need to maintain a level of patch management across your infrastructure or worry about installing or updating any software. So let's dive into AWS Elastic Load Balancer service, what it is and how it works. The main function of an Elastic Load Balancer or ELB is to evenly distribute inbound requests across a group of targets such as EC2 instances, Lambda functions, IP addresses or containers. 
Using a single instance for your application can lead to challenges like downtime and performance limitations. Uh, and ELB helps by evenly distributing traffic across multiple instances, provide high availability and automatic scaling. So there are three types of ELBs to choose from the application load balancer, the network load balancer and the classic load balancer, each of its own unique features and use cases. So the key components are listeners, target groups, rules and health checks are essential components of an ELB, ensuring efficient routing and maintaining the health of the resources. Overview of server certificates and ALB listeners. The application load balancer provides a flexible feature set for web applications running the HTTP or HTTPS protocols. When using the HTTPS encrypted protocol as a listener, it requires additional configuration to set up an encrypted communication channel between clients and your application load balancer. To receive encrypted traffic over HTTPS, your ALB will need a server certificate and an associated security policy. These certificates are X509 certificates provisioned by a certificate authority such as the AWS Certificate Manager Service, ACM. When selecting HTTPS as your listener, you will be asked to choose a certificate from ACM, upload a certificate to ACM, choose a certificate from IAM, or upload a certificate to IAM. Using ACM simplifies the configuration process and is the preferred option. So let's understand the application load balancer in AWS. The ALB operates at layer 7, the application layer on the OSI model, providing advanced routing and visibility features for application architectures like microservices and containers. Before setting up your ALB, it's essential to configure target groups. These groups route requests to different resources based on the nature of the request. In the AWS Management Console, navigate to the EC2 service, select Load Balancing, then Target Groups and create a new target group. Specify the target type protocol, VPC and health check settings. After creating the target bucket, target group, associate the relevant instances with it. These ensure that the ALB routes request to the specified resources. With the ALB, you can easily create different target groups and customize how your load balancer directs traffic based on your specific rules. Let's dive into network load balancer and its configuration. The network load balancer operates at layer 4 on the OSI model, enabling you to balance requests purely based on the TCP and UDP protocols. It can process millions of requests per second, making it a great choice for ultra high performance applications. Also, if your application logic requires a static IP address, then the NLB will need to be your choice of elastic load balancer. Now let's provide a demonstration on how to configure and set up a network load balancer. To create our network load balancer, let's go to EC2 under compute, then under load balancing, click load balancers and then click on create load balancer. Select the UDP protocol and the load balancer port, configure security settings, routing and associate the target group. Once you are happy with all your configuration settings, click on create and there you have it. Your network load balancer is now created. So let's now dive into the overview of classic load balancer. The classic load balancer supports TCP, SSL, TLS, HTTP and HTTPS protocols. It's best practice to use the ALB over the classic load balancer unless you have an existing application running on the EC2 classic network. The EC2 classic platform is no longer supported for newer AWS accounts created after April 12, 2013. Creating a classic load balancer involves selecting the VPC, configuring listener settings, assigning security groups, configuring health checks, and associating instances. 
The classic load balancer offers supports for EC2 classic, TCP and SSL listeners and sticky sessions using application generated cookies. Let's dive into the world of EC2 auto scaling. EC2 auto scaling is a mechanism that automatically adjusts your EC2 resources based on custom defined metrics and thresholds. It allows you to increase or decrease your EC2 fleet to meet demand, ensuring optimal performance and cost efficiency. Imagine having a single EC2 instance as a web server. As demand increases, so does the load on the instance. With auto scaling, you can configure metrics to automatically launch additional instances to balance the load, ensuring smooth performance for end users. Similarly, when demand decreases, auto scaling can automatically terminate in unnecessary instances, optimizing cost. Auto scaling provides automation, greater customer satisfaction, and cost reduction. It Elastically provision resources, prevents performance issues, and optimizes resources cost based on demand. There are two key steps to the configuration process of EC2 auto scaling creating the launch configuration or launch template, and then creating the auto scaling group. So, when using EC2 auto scaling, you can either create a launch configuration or a launch template. Both define how to how an auto scaling group builds new EC2 instances. The launch template is essentially a newer and more advanced version of the launch configuration, allowing you to simply how you launch instances for your auto scaling groups. To create a launch template, you will need to specify various parameters such as AMI ID, instance type, key pair, network type, security groups, storage volumes, instance tags, and more. Once you are happy with the information, simply click on Create Launch Template. Creating a launch configuration is sim similar to creating a launch template, but with a few differences in options and presentation. Once you are satisfied with the selected options, click on Create Launch Configuration. The main difference between the two is that the launch template is presented all on a single page, allowing you to quickly select your options without either the launch configuration or launch template. Auto scaling would not know what instance it was launching and to which configuration. So stay tuned for the next demonstration on how to create an auto scaling group. So let's dive into an overview of the relationship between ELBs and EC2 auto scaling. ELBs and EC2 auto scaling work hand in hand to optimize performance and cost efficiency. The ELB dynamically manages loads across resources based on target groups and roles, which EC2 auto scaling elastically scales those ta target groups based on infrastructure demand. Operating with just an ELB and an auto scaling means manually managing and monitoring demand, adding or removing instances as needed. On the other hand, having EC2 auto scaling without the ELB means unevenly distributing traffic to the EC2 fleet. So combining an ELB and auto scaling helps manage and automatically scale EC2 compute resources. When attached, the ELB will automatically detect instances and distribute traffic to the resources in the auto scaling group. To attach an existing load balancer to your auto scaling group, simply go to the EC2 dashboard, select the auto scaling group, go to the actions, then edit and add the classic load balancer or associated it with the relevant target group. Combining ELBs and EC2 auto scaling is a quick and simple way to optimize your infrastructure. Storage in AWS. Designed to help you prepare for the AWS Cloud Practitioner certification, whether you are new to cloud computing or looking to expand your knowledge, this lesson is tailored to guide you through the various stages services in AWS. So introduce your storage services. Let's dive into the Amazon Simple Storage Service, S3. 
Amazon Elastic Block Store EBS, Amazon Elastic File System EFS, and Amazon FSX. Additionally, we will explore hybrid cloud storage services and on-premises data backup solutions using AWS Backup, AWS Storage Gateway, and AWS Elastic Disaster Recovery. So let's start with the Amazon Simple Storage Service S3. So Amazon S3 is a fully managed object-based storage service provided by AWS. It's highly available, durable, cost-effective, and scalable. S3 offers unlimited storage capabilities and a durability of 99.999%, making data loss extremely rare. When uploading data, you specify the regional location and S3 stores and duplicates your data across multiple availability zones with, within that region. So to st store objects in S3, you first define and create a unique bucket, then upload your data within it. You can also create folders within the bucket for easier data management. Amazon S3 is a powerful and versatile storage service offering high durability, availability, and scalability for a wide range of use cases. So Amazon S3 offers a range of storage classes, each designed to meet specific performance and cost requirements. So let's dive into the different storage classes available and their unique features. So the first one is S3 standard storage class. It's ideal for high throughput, low latency, and frequent data access. It offers 99.99% availability and 11 nines of durability across multiple availability zones with SSL support for data encryption and lifecycle rules for automatic data management. It provides a secure and flexible storage solution. S3 intelligent tiring is perfect for unpredictable data access patterns, automatically optimizing storage costs. It offers the same durability as S3 storage and supports lifecycle rules providing a cost-effective and efficient storage solution. S3 Glacier Deep Archive For long-term storage needs, S3 Glacier Deep Archive is the most cost-effective option, offering 11 nines in the durability and 99.9% .9 availability. It's ideal for data retention compliance and minimal access requirements. When selecting a storage class for your data, consider factors like criticality, reproductibility, and access frequency. Choose the right storage class to meet your specific data requirements. EC2 instance two volumes. So let's dive in and understand the key points about these unique storage options. EC2 instance two volumes, a local desk drive physically resting on the same host as your EC2 instance. They provide Femoral storage, meaning any data stored on these volumes is considered temporary and could be lost if instance is stopped or terminated. Despite the risk of data loss, instance store volumes have benefits. They're cost effective, offer high input output speeds, and are ideal for frequently changing data, making them great for catching and load balancing groups. So it is important to note that. Not all instance types support instance store volumes. Additionally, from a security standpoint, they don't offer additional security features and have the same security mechanism provided by EC2. If you need persistent data or shared access, EC2 instance store volumes may not be the best option. However, for a quick and easy block level storage, the Elastic Block Store service is recommended. Introduction to Amazon Elastic Block Store. So let's dive into the key features and benefits of EBS. EBS provides persistent and durable block level storage, offering flexibility in managing data compared to instance store volumes. EBS volumes can be attached to your EC2 instances and are used for rapidly changing data that may require a specific input output operations per second rate. EBS volumes are independent of the EC2 instance, 
ensuring data are persistent even if instances are stopped, restarted, or terminated. EBS also offers point in time backups known as snapshots stored on Amazon S3, providing resilience and flexibility. So, there are two types of EBS volumes SST backed storage and HTTT HDD backed storage, each with unique characteristics and performance factors. These volumes cater to different use cases, offering optimized storage solutions. EBS enhances data security through encryption using the AES-256 encryption algorithm, the interaction with the key management service for encryption process, snapshots from encrypted volumes and volumes created from encrypted snapshots are also encrypted. In conclusion, EBS offers a range of benefits including high availability, resilience and security, making it a versatile storage option for EC2 instance. So let's check out Amazon Elastic File System or EFS. So Amazon EFS is a fully managed, highly available and durable service that provides simple scalable file storage for use with Amazon EC2 instance. It supports access by multiple EC2 instance at once, much like traditional file servers or network attached storage. EFS is designed to maintain a high level of throughput and low latency access, making it a desirable storage solution for a wide variety of workloads and use cases. It supports both NFS version 4.1 and 4.0 and uses standard file system semantics such as strong consistency and file lacking. The file system is replicated across availability zones in a single region, making EFS a highly reliable storage service. It's a great storage option for applications that scale across multiple instances, allowing for parallel access of data. In conclusion, Amazon EFS is a powerful and flexible storage solution that can easily scale to petabytes in size with low latency access, making it an ideal choice for a wide range of applications and workloads. So let's try to understand Amazon EFS storage class options and performance modes. Amazon EFS offers two different storage classes, standard and infrequent access. The standard storage class is the default storage used when using EFS, while IA is generally used for data that is rarely accessed offering a cost reduction on your storage. So EFS provides two performance modes, general purpose and max input output. So general purpose is typically used for most use cases, offering all round performance and low latency file operation. Max input output on the other hand, offers virtually unlimited throughput and IOPS, but the higher file operation latency. EFS also provides two different throughput modes, bursting throughput and provision throughput. Bursting throughput scales as your file system grows, while provisioned throughput allows you to burst above your allocated allowances based on your file system size. So let's dive into Amazon FSX, a dedicated file system that might be the solution you need. So when it comes to creating a file system with AWS, you might be considering Amazon EFS or Amazon FSX. So, but what's the difference? Amazon EFS is a simple and scalable file system for Linux-based workloads, while Amazon FSX offers two options, FSX for Windows file server and FSX for Lustre. FSX for Windows file server provides a highly scalable, fully managed file storage solution that is accessible over SMB protocol. It's perfect for various applications and workloads, including home directories, line of business applications, web servers, and more. With features like encryption, data duplication, and fast in-memory caching, it's a robust solution for Windows-based applications. On the other hand, FSX for Lustre is built for high performance computing, providing extremely fast file storage with up to 100 gigabytes per second of throughput. 
It's ideal for workloads like high performance compute, machine learning and video processing. So when designing your architectures around storage, it's critical to understand if your application is sensitive to throughput or IOPS. Whether you need solid state disk for low latency or hard disk drives for maximum throughput. Amazon FXX has the solution for your specific needs. And if your data is located on premises, but you lack the necessary compute resources, Amazon FXS, FSX can help you seamlessly burst into the cloud for the additional service resources you need. With Amazon FSX, you can find the perfect file storage solution tailored to your specific use case. So explore the possibilities of FSX of your data storage needs. So let's dive into an overview of AWS Backup, a centralized solution for managing and implementing backups across various AWS services. So the key features are AWS Backups acts as a central hub to manage backups across your environment, providing full auditability and compliance controls. It also allows for the automation of on-premises data backup through AWS Storage Gateway. So what are backup plans? So when using AWS Backup, you will need to create backup plans, which includes backup schedules, windows, lifecycle rules, backup walls, regional copies and tags. These plans can be customized to meet the backup needs of different types of resources. The service offers warm and cold storage options with cost based on GB per month. Implementing lifecycle rules for supported resources can help optimize backup cost. So AWS Backup provides a comprehensive solution for centralizing, monitoring, and optimizing backups across multiple regions. By leveraging backups plans and lifecycle rules, users can effectively manage backup costs and ensure data retention when needed. AWS Storage Gateway. The gateway can be deployed as a virtual machine hardware appliance are in the AWS environment as an EC2 instance. Regardless of the deployment method, a minimum of 150 MB of local disk space is required for the local cache. There are four types of storage gateways, S3 file gateway, FSX file gateway, tape gateway, and volume gateway, each serving different storage needs. The pricing component includes storage pricing, request pricing and data transfer pricing, which cost varying based on the type of gateway used. In summary, AWS Storage Gateway offers a flexible cost-effective solution for a hybrid storage needs, enabling seamless communication between on-premises applications and storage class, cloud storage services. So let's dive into introduction of AWS Elastic Disaster Recovery, DRS. So AWS Elastic Disaster Recovery is a service that enables you to recover from application failures in physical or virtual servers hosted in on-premises data centers or other cloud providers. It allows you to save cost by utilizing AWS resources in the cloud instead of maintaining an expensive physical disaster recovery site. With DRS, you only pay for your recovery site resources when they are in use, either during a drill or an actual failover. DRS automatically converts your physical servers to run natively on AWS in the event of a failure, making it possible to use DRS for migrating on-premises workloads and applications to the AWS cloud. It fully integrates with the AWS Management Console and supports integration with other AWS services, including IAM, CloudWatch, and CloudTrail. So thanks for joining for this quick introduction to AWS Elastic Disaster Recovery. Good luck on your certification journey. So let's dive into introduction to database services in AWS. So managed relational database using Amazon, relational database servers are RDS, including Amazon Aurora, managed NoSQL databases, including Amazon DynamoDB.
So let's try to understand the AWS managed databases. So databases are the foundation of modern application development with two primary types, relational and non-relational. So there are nine primary categories of database available on AWS, each optimized to support a specified type of workloads. So matching an application with the appropriate database type is essential for highly performant and cost-effective operation. So operational applications or OLTP are centered around regular repeatable business process, while analytical applications or OLAP are run on demand for things like business intelligence workloads and data analysis. Databases power 21st century applications and the efficient use of resources in the cloud requires organizations to be agile, responsive to change, and consider the requirements of scalability and elasticity. That's a glimpse into the world of AWS managed databases. So let's dive into the world of relational databases. Relational databases have been around since 1970s, providing an efficient, initiative, and flexible way to store and report on highly structured data. The structures called schemas are defined before any data can be entered into the database. So data in a relational database is stored in tables with each table containing one or more rows of data. These tables have primary keys that uniquely identify the information stored in each row. Data integrity is of a particular concern in a relational database with constraints ensuring the reliability and accuracy of the data. The standard user and application programming interface of relational databases is the structured query language SQL. It is used to create, update, and maintain the data inside a relational database. Scaling an application. Relational databases are ideal for applications that do online transaction processing, such as online banking, e-commerce sites, and financial services. However, for analytical applications processing larger volumes of data, non-relational databases, also known as NoSQL databases, are helpful. Relational databases offers a structured and reliable way to store and manage data, making them essential for a wide range of applications. So let's dive into the world of non-relational schema-less and horizontally scaled data stores and NoSQL databases. NoSQL databases are a family of non-relational databases that includes key value databases, column family stores, document stores, and graph stores. They are also known for their flexibility and unstructured, rapidly changing data. The scaling a NoSQL database is easier and less expensive than scaling a relational database. NoSQL databases generally trade consistency for performance and scalability, making them a popular choice for developers. In summary, NoSQL database offers a dynamic approach to organize data, making them a great fit for applications with unstructured or semi-structured data. Whether it's a key value, document, or graph stores, NoSQL databases provides a wide range, wide range of options for developers. Amazon Relational Database Service, RDS. Amazon RDS, a managed service that simplifies the provisioning and scaling of relational databases within AWS. Amazon RDS offers a variety of database engine options, including MySQL, MariaDB, PostgreSQL, Amazon Aurora, Oracle and SQL Server. Each engine is tailored to specific use cases and performances, providing flexibility and choice for your database needs. With Amazon RDS, you can streamline your database operations and focus on innovation. Stay tuned for more insights on optimizing your AWS environments. Amazon DynamoDB a fully managed, serverless, NoSQL database service. Amazon DynamoDB is a fully managed, meaning AWS handles infrastructure provisioning and maintenance. 
no database administration, server provisioning, or backup complexity required. It, it's also serverless, so server administration is invisible to the user. AWS takes care of the servers, allowing you to focus solely on your data and its modeling. DynamoDB is a NoSQL database storing data differently than relational databases. It supports key value and document access patterns, providing highly partitionable and scalable key value stores. So experience the ease and power of Amazon DynamoDB for efficient data management and access. Let's dive into the key features and characteristics of DynamoDB. DynamoDB is designed to be highly available by default with data automatically replicated across three different availability zones within a geographic region. These ensures resiliency in the case of an outage or incident. DynamoDB provides fast performance and has no upper limit to how large a table can scale to making it ideal for OLTP workloads that need high scalability and data durability. The database supports transactions and offers global tables for even greater level of resiliency and performance, enabling data replications across regions for low latency reads and writes. DynamoDB offers backup functionality, including on-demand backup and point-in-time recovery, ensuring compliance compliance and the ability to roll back to a previous state. DynamoDB is best suited for OLTP workloads, especially for new serverless applications and is commonly used in gaming, e-commerce and transportation industries. If you require a fully managed OLTP database that is infinitely scaled and serverless, DynamoDB is a great choice. So let's try compare the DynamoDB to relational databases. Relational databases scale vertically, while DynamoDB scales horizontally, allowing it to scale almost infinitely. This means that DynamoDB scales transparently to the user, handling scalability without the need for manual management. Unlike relational databases with fixed schemas, DynamoDB is schemaless. This means you don't have to define a fixed table structure in advance, allowing more flexibility in adjusting columns and data types on the fly. While DynamoDB offers scalability and flexibility, it has limitations. For instance, its query and scan feature aren't as flexible as SQL, and it has a limited range of data types compared to relational databases. So if you're familiar with NoSQL databases like MongoDB, you find the DynamoDB varies in terms of data modes, models, and platform compatibility. DynamoDB has a strict limitation such as maximum item size of 400 kilobytes, which may require storing large objects in a separate storage solution. Consider these factors when deciding between DynamoDB and relational databases. So let's check out Amazon Neptune, a fast, reliable, secure, and a fully managed graph database service. Amazon Neptune is ideal for various use cases, such as social networking, fraud detection, and recommendation engines. It's a powerful asset for understanding and querying complex relationships within vast interconnected data sets. Amazon Neptune uses its own graph database engine and supports two graph query frameworks, Apache Tinker Pop, Kremlin, and World Wide Web Consortium SparkQL. Additionally, a Neptune database cluster is comprised of single or multiple database instances across different availability zones, ensuring high durability and reliability of data. Neptune storage auto repair automatically detects and repairs segment failures Minimizing data loss. Replica instances are, are used to scale read operations and provide lower support, ensuring minimal lag for read query results. Amazon Neptune provides three types of endpoints. Cluster endpoint, 
reader endpoint and instance endpoint, each serving different purpose for accessing the database. Now that you have a better understanding of Amazon Neptune, you can explore its capabilities and consider its potential applications in your solutions. Amazon Memory DB for Redis, a fully managed in memory data store service that's compatible with the popular open source Redis data structures too. Amazon Memory DB for Redis is designed to provide ultra fast, low latency access to data stored in memory, offering microsecond read and single digit millisecond write latencies. It gets deployed as a cluster within your VPC, with each cluster consisting of one or more nodes responsible for serving a single data set. These nodes are partitioned into shards, each with a primary node and up to five read replica nodes, spread across availability zones to provide high availability. In addition to these features, MemoryDB for Ready supports clusters up to 500 nodes in size transaction logs distributed across multiple availability zones, data tiring, encryption of data in transit and at rest, and snapshots for easy backup and restore of your MemoryDB cluster. In summary, Amazon MemoryDB for Redis offers ultra fast access to in-memory data sets and can help you reduce the complexity and cost of managing data store infrastructure for your application. introduction to networking and content delivery services in AWS, including Amazon Virtual Private Cloud or VPC, Configuring Security Groups and Network Access Control List or NACL, AWS Private Virtual Private Network or VPN Solutions, or AWS Direct Connect. So let's dive into the world of VPCs or virtual private clouds within the AWS infrastructure. A VPC is essentially your own isolated segment of the AWS cloud, providing a secure environment for deploying resources like compute, storage, databases, and networks infrastructure. So when you create a VPC, it's completely isolated, accessible only by your own AWS account. Each AWS account can have up to five VPCs per region, and creating one is as simple as defining a name and the IP address range using a CIDR block. In summary, a VPC is a secure space within the AWS public cloud, allowing you to provision and deploy resources safely. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into VPC architecture and discuss subnets and segmentation across multiple availability zones for resiliency and high availability. So let's try to understand subnets in AWS VPC. So subnets reside inside your VPC, allowing you to segment your VPC infrastructure into multiple different networks. These can create better resource management, isolate certain resources, or enhance high availability and resiliency within your infrastructure. So public subnets are accessible from outside the VPC, while private subnets are considered private and inaccessible by default from the internet. To make a subnet public, you need to add an internet, internet gateway and configure the root table. This allows the subnet to access the internet. To ensure high availability and resilience, it's best to deploy resources across multiple availability zones. This way, if one zone experiences a failure, your services will remain up and running by adding additional subnets and replicating resources, you can ensure that at least one subnet in each layer of your infrastructure remains operational. Now that we have covered subnets, let's move on to some security features. Managing security in AWS Virtual Private Cloud. So security is a crucial in any AWS deployment and it's no different when it comes to your VPC. One key component is NACLs, or Network Access Control List. These access virtual network level firewall for each subnet, 
controlling both inbound and outbound traffic. By configuring NACLs, you can ensure that only the desired traffic is allowed in and out of your subnet. So for example, in a public subnet with web servers, you can set up inbound NACL rules to allow HTTP and HTTPS traffic while denying all other traffic. These ensures that only the necessary traffic is permitted. Similarly, outbound NACL rules restrict traffic based on its destination. They allow specific traffic to exit the subnet while denying all other traffic. So remember, NACLs are stateless meaning response traffic must be explicitly allowed. They are a powerful tool for controlling traffic in and out for your subnets. Security groups and network access control lists, NACLs. These are crucial for filtering traffic and ensuring the security of your network. Security groups operates at the instance level, allowing you to control traffic to and from specific instances. They are more specific and flexible compared to NACLs, making them ideal for controlling access to databases and other resources. On the other hand, NACLs work at the subnet level, providing a broader control over traffic within the subnets. They are essential for filtering traffic at the network layer. Both NACLs and security groups work together to provide comprehensive security. NACLs control traffic at the subnet level, while security groups manage traffic at the instance level, ensuring a multi-layered approach to network security. By understanding the roles of NACLs and security groups, you can effectively control and secure the flow of traffic within your network. So let's try to understand the NAT gateway in AWS VPC. In an AWS VPC, a NAT gateway allows instances within a private subnet to access the internet while blocking all incoming initi initiations from the internet. This ensures the security of the private subnet and helps in maintaining the security of EC2 instances. The NAT gateway sits within the public subnet, has a public IP address, and is managed by AWS. It's easy to set up and configure, and AWS will manage all other configurations. If you have multiple public subnets in different availability zones, you will need to set up another gate, NAT gateway within each subnet. In summary, a NAT gateway is a crucial component in AWS VPC, providing secure internet access to private subnets while maintaining the security of EC2 instances. So let's dive into the world of VPN connections, also known as virtual private networks. The virtual private network is a secure way of connecting two remote networks across the internet. In the context of AWS and VPC, it's a powerful tool for enabling secure communications between resources in a private subnet and on-premises data centers. To set up a VPN, you will need to create a virtual gateway in your VPC and a customer gateway in your data center. Then you will initiate a tunnel between the two endpoints and configure the root table associated with the private subnet. Now let's talk about Direct Connect. Unlike VPN, Direct Connect doesn't use the internet. It's a method of connecting your remote location directly to AWS environment using a private infrastructure. So whether it's setting up a secure VPN connection or exploring the benefits of Direct Connect, there are multiple options for connecting your own premises data center to your AWS environment. So let's try to understand AWS Direct Connect. This is a method of connecting your remote location like a data center or remote office to your AWS environment. It's different from a VPC connection because it doesn't use a public internet. Instead, it uses private infrastructure to connect directly to your VPC. With Direct Connect, there is a middle entity, usually an AWS partner or customer that holds the infrastructure. These includes a customer side and an AWS side 
both within a facility owned and managed by a partner of AWS. The connection is made to a defined AWS region, not just a VPC, allowing access to public and private resources. You can configure private and public virtual interfaces on your router. The private interface connects to your VPC, while the public interface allows access to public AWS resources. These all happens without traversing the public internet using dedicated and isolated infrastructure. Direct Connect offers a private connection with speeds from 1 to 10 gigabytes per second, making it a reliable and high speed option for connecting your remote location to your AWS environment. So that's a high level overview of AWS Direct Connect. Stay tuned for more insights on VPC peering and the transit gateway. Understanding VPC pairing in AWS. VPC pairing allows you to connect two VPCs together, enabling communication between resources in each VPC, whether they are in the same region or different regions. It's important to note that VPC pairing is one-to-one -one connection only, meaning each VPC can only be directly connected to one other VPC. With setting up VPC pairing, Ensure that the IP addressing schemas of the VPCs do not overlap as these would prevent the pairing connection. To initiate a pairing connection, the owner of one PPC sends a pairing request to the owner of the other PPC. Once accepted, both VPCs update their routing tables to allow traffic to flow between them. And that's a brief overview of VPC pairing in AWS. Stay tuned for more insights. So let's jump into the overview of uh, AWS Transit Gateway. It's a central hub that simplifies network connectivity, allowing all your VPCs and remote locations to communicate with each other easily. With AWS Transit Gateway, you can connect all your VPCs and remote locations through a central hub, reducing the complexity of managing multiple connections. This centralization allows for easier monitoring of network traffic and connectivity through a single dashboard. In summary, AWS Transit Gateway streamlines your network infrastructure, making it easier for VPCs and remote locations to communicate. So say goodbye to hassle of managing numerous VPC pairing connections and embrace the simplicity of AWS Transit Gateway. So let's dive into the world of domain naming system and how route 53 provides secure and reliable routing of request. So what is DNS? DNS or domain name system is like the phone book of the internet, translating domain names to IP addresses. It's a crucial part of how the internet functions. Route 53 is Amazon's highly available and scalable domain name system offering secure and reliable routing of request. It's managed through a global network of authoritative DNS servers, reducing latency and providing secure routing. Route 53 includes components like hosted zones, supported domains, resource record types, and routing policies, each playing a vital role in managing and routing traffic effectively. With its robust features and global network, Amazon Route 53 is a powerful tool for managing DNS and routing traffic. So let's try to explore how Amazon CloudFront works and its key features. Amazon CloudFront is a content delivery network service provided by AWS. It's designed to speed up the distribution of your static and dynamic content through a network of edge locations worldwide. When a user requests content, CloudFront routes the request to the closest edge location, reducing latency and delivering the best performance through cache data. CloudFront uses distribution to control which source data it needs to redistribute and to where. It offers two delivery methods, web distribution for static and dynamic content and RTMP distribution for streaming media. So when configuring your distributions, you will need to enter your origin information, selecting catching behavior options and define the distribution settings. 
once your distribution is configured you simply enable it for it to be created these allow end users to access content from their closest edge location reducing latency and improving performance and that's a brief overview of amazon cloudfront stay tuned for more insights on aws services so let's explore how these aws global accelerator can en enhance the speed reliability and security of your application the aws global accelerator efficiently routes UDP and TCP traffic from end user clients to applications, leveraging AWS global infrastructure and specified endpoints. These ensure faster, more reliable connectivity compared to traversing the public internet. To set up the AWS global accelerator, follow four key steps, creating the accelerator, setting up a listener, associating it with an endpoint group and finally registering your endpoints for the application. So let's take a quick look at how to create an AWS Global Accelerator in an AWS Management Console. First, select a name for your accelerator and choose the IP address type. Then add listeners for incoming connection and configure endpoint groups for different regions. With AWS Global Accelerator, you can easily enhance the performance and availability of your application across multiple regions. So let's dive into introduction of migration and transfer services in AWS, which includes the AWS Cloud Adoption Framework, AWS Application Discovery Service, AWS Application Migration Service, AWS Database Migration Service, or DMS, AWS Migration Hub, AWS Schema Conversion Tool, AWS No Family, AWS Transfer Family. So let's dive into the world of AWS Cloud Adoption Framework. The AWS CF accelerates digital transformation to the AWS Cloud, offering benefits like reduced business risk and improved operational efficiency. It focuses on six prospectives, business, people, governance, platform, security, and operations, aligning with foundational capabilities across four transformation domains. So for example, within the, the business prospective are foundational capabilities like strategy management and product management. These prospectives, transformation domains, and foundational capabilities provide a roadmap for outcomes like reduced business risk and increased operational efficiency. The AWS CAF encourages incremental and iterative transformation consisting of phases like Envision, Align, Launch, and Scale. So if you're looking to accelerate your digital transformation to the AWS Cloud, the AWS Cloud Adoption Framework is your guide to success. The seven hours. Curious about the seven hours and why they exist? They are a framework designed to guide organizations through migrating from on-premises infrastructure to the public cloud like AWS. Whether you're moving your whole data center or just one application to AWS, the seven hours help evaluate the most efficient migration strategy that aligns with your business requirements. Migrating to the cloud involves addressing all components not just the application itself. These includes customer data, communication, security, and ongoing management. So what are the seven R's? They are re-hosting, re-platforming, repurchasing, refactoring, re-architecting, relocating, retiring, and retaining. These methods help focus on the most appropriate approach based on your specific needs. So let's dive into a Snow family in AWS, a range of physical hardware devices designed to transfer data. A Snow family consists of various physical hardware devices that enable the transfer of data into AWS from the edge or beyond the cloud, such as your data center. These devices can also be used to transfer data out of AWS, for example, from Amazon S3 back to your data center. 
You can perform data transfers from as little as few terabytes using an AWS no cone all the way up to a staggering 100 petabytes using a single AWS no mobile. These devices are essential when traditional network connectivity is not feasible due to time constraints and data transfer fees. In addition to these storage capacity, some Snow family devices come with compute power, allowing you to run usable EC2 instances designed for the Snow family. These enables applications to run operations in remote and difficult to reach environments, even without a data center in sight. The Snow family is revolutionizing data transfer, making it possible to process and analyze data closer to the source, even in challenging environments. AWS Snow family, the future of data transfer. So let's compare the AWS Snow Cone, Snowball and Snowmobile to help you make an informed decision. The AWS Snow Cone is lightweight, portable and rugged with eight terabyte of storage and an EC2 instance. It's perfect for capturing, processing and analyzing data, even in challenging environments. Plus it can be attached to a drone for added versatility. The Snow, AWS Snowball is larger with up to 80 terabyte of storage and is ideal for large scale data transfer operations. It comes in different variant for storage, compute and GPU acceleration, making it suitable for various use cases. You would use the snow cone for portable on the go data needs, while Snowball is better suited for stationary, high capacity data transfer and compute intensive workloads. So both the snow cone and snowball are perfect for portable edge computing data storage and transfer in remote locations, industrial settings, and the media and entertainment industry. The AWS Snow Mobile is designed for massive data transfers up to 100 petabytes per unit, making it ideal for migrating entire data centers or storage libraries quickly, securely, and cost effectively. Now that you have a better understanding of the AWS Snow devices, you can confidently choose the right one for your specific needs. Let's dive into the introduction of AWS Transfer Family. The AWS Transfer Family is a fully managed service that allows secure file transfer into and out of AWS storage without the need to manage your own file transfer infrastructure. It supports protocol like FTP, FTPS, SFTP and AS2, making it ideal for recurring or ad hoc business to business file transfers. Plus it offers managed workflows for post upload processing tasks. For pricing, you will pay an hourly rate for each protocol enabled along with a fixed per gigabyte rate for FTP, FTPS and SFTP endpoints and a fixed per message rate for AS2 endpoints. Decoupled architecture. In the past, applications were tightly coupled, with changes in one area easily disrupting other services. Decoupled architecture, however, allows different components to operate independently without being closely tied to each other. This means that changes to one component won't affect the other, allowing for faster and more efficient development. In event-driven architectures, Services are triggered by events that occur within the infrastructure. Events can be changes of state, like an EC2 instance transitioning from running or stopping. When implementing event-driven architectures in AWS, there are typically three components, a producer, an event router, and consumers. The event router sits between the producers and consumers, ensuring that each component is decoupled and can operate independently. Amazon Simple Notification Service or SNS. SNS implements a one-to-many message distribution model, allowing a single message to be published to a topic and then pushed to one or more subscribers. It can send push notification messages to mobile devices and desktops using various supported push notification services including Apple Push Notification Service, Windows Push Notification Service, and more. 
Subscribers can be HTTPS URL endpoints, email addresses, AWS Lambda functions, or even text messages to phone numbers via short message services for clients in over 200 countries. SNS enables topic subscribers to selectively receive only a subset of the messages that interest them using a subscription filter policy in JSON format. With the ability to seamlessly scale from a handful of messages per day to millions of messages, Amazon SNS is the go-to service for implementing notifications using AWS services, including events. Amazon Kinesis Data Streams. So are you curious about real-time data processing and its impact on modern applications? So let's dive into the world of Amazon Kinesis Data Streams and its roles in handling large data sets in real time. So real-time computing is crucial for applications like the stock market and Internet of Things devices, where data transfers and processing must be completed quickly for meaningful results. Amazon Kinesis Data Streams is designed to handle large data sets in real time, maintaining a copy of all received data for up to 365 days. It's made up of shards, each storing data records in sequence and can handle up to 1000 records per second per shard. The Kinesis Client Library ensures efficient and decoupled consumptions of record from the stream simplifying the reading of data and enabling multiple consumer applications. In short, Amazon Kinesis Data Streams is a powerful tool for real-time processing of streaming big data, offering the ability to replay records of multiple applications ready to explore the world of real-time data processing. So try Amazon Kinesis Data Streams today and explore its benefits. So let's dive into the world of serverless computing within AWS. So let's explore the different categories and services available to help you navigate these existing domain. So first up, we have the serverless compute services. These are essential for any application handling the actual work performed. AWS Lambda, the pioneer in this space, allow you to run code without managing a server while Fargate enables running serverless containers for an, an unlimited time. Moving on to application integration services, we have Amazon Event Bridge, AWS Step Functions, Amazon SQS, and Amazon SNS. These services act as the interstitial glue connecting and sending data between applications and AWS services. Lastly, let's, uh, let's explore the serverless database services, Amazon S3, Amazon DynamoDB, Amazon RTS Proxy, and Aurora Serverless offers fully managed, scalable, and highly available data storage solutions. So whether you are delving into compute integration or database, AWS has a wide array of serverless options to suit your needs. So ready to embark on your serverless journey. So let's uh, do an introduction to management and governance services in AWS, which includes AWS Cloud Trial, AWS Config, Amazon CloudWatch. So let's dive into the world of AWS Cloud Trial. AWS Cloud Trial is a service designed to record and track events including API requests and non-API requests made within your AWS account. These events can be initiated from various sources such as user SDKs and AWS command line interface or even other AWS services. CloudTrial categorizes and tracks three types of events, management events, data events, and CloudTrial insight events, each providing valuable information about different aspects of your AWS resources and operations. So by default, Cloud Trial is enabled for all new accounts, allowing you to view and filter events using the, the event history within the AWS Management Console. You can also configure Cloud Trial Trails to store, review, and analyze captured events, providing deeper insights and enabling event-driven architecture. AWS Cloud Trial offers a powerful way to capture, store, and analyze events within your AWS accounts 
providing valuable feasibility and control over your infrastructure. AWS Config Service. Let's dive into what it is and what it does. So in any organization, managing IT infrastructure resources can be a headache. So understanding what resources are available, then configurations and security vulnerability is crucial. AWS Config was designed to capture resource changes, provide a resource inventory, store configuration history, and enable notification of changes. It can enforce rules for resource compliance, perform security analysis, and provide relationship connectivity information between resources. AWS Config is region-specific and supports a wide range of common services and resources. So let's dive into Amazon CloudWatch, your window into the health and operational performance of your application and infrastructure. Amazon CloudWatch is a global service designed to monitor and review the performance of your resources, providing insights that can trigger automated responses or manual operational changes. CloudWatch offers a wide range of components, including CloudWatch dashboards, metrics and anomaly detection, alarm event bridge, logs and insights. Using the AWS Management Console, you can build and customize dashboards with different visual widgets, offering a unified view of your resources. Metrics are fundamental to CloudWatch, enabling you to monitor specific elements of applications or resources over time, while anomaly detection helps detect abnormal activity. CloudWatch Alarm allow you to implement automatic actions based on specific thresholds, while Event Bridge provides real-time monitoring and event-driven architecture. CloudWatch Logs centralizes log data from various AWS services and insights provide the ability to analyze and visualize log data, container metrics, and Lambda metrics. Amazon CloudWatch offers a powerful suite of tools to help you gain valuable insights and optimize your infrastructure. So AWS organization and service control policies. Let's explore the fundamental concepts of AWS organization and the benefits it brings to managing your AWS environment. As business expands their footprints on AWS, the need for multiple AWS accounts becomes apparent. These multi-account strategy is beneficial for reasons such as corporate optimization, security governance, and workload management. AWS organization uses components like organizations, root, organizational units, accounts, and service control policies to help manage your accounts effectively. The primary benefit of AWS organization is its ability to centrally manage multiple accounts from a single AWS account known as the master account. It also provides great greater control over your AWS environments and allow for consolidated billing and categorization of accounts. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into the hierarchy of AWS organization and the role of service control policies. Setup and configuration of AWS organizations. This process is crucial for managing multiple AWS accounts efficiently and securely. To begin, select a standard AWS account to serve as the master account. Remember, it's a best practice to use this account slowly for managing the organization. Once the master account is chosen, you can create the organization. You have the option to enable all features or only consolidate billing depending on your needs. After creating the organization, the master account can invite other AWS accounts to join. The invited accounts will receive an email requesting their participation. Finally, you can organize accounts into different organizational units. For better management, these allows you to apply specific policies to different parts of your organization. Setting up and configuring AWS organization is a straightforward process that streamlines the management of multiple AWS accounts. Start by selecting a master account and creating the organization. Then invite member 
accounts and organize them into units of efficient management. Service control policies in AWS organization. Let's explore how SCPs can be used to secure your AWS organization. Service control policies are SCPs set a boundary of permissions for AWS accounts. Unlike identity-based and resource-based policies, SCPs do not grant permissions themselves. Instead, they restrict permissions within an AWS account. For example, if an SCP denies access to the S3 device, S3 service, a user with full access to S3 via an identity-based policy would only be able to access RDS and EC2, despite having full access to S3. To use SCPs, you need to enable them from the root account of your organization. Once enabled, you can begin using SCPs within your organizations to manage security at an account level. SCPs do not affect resources based policies and only affect principles managed by your accounts in your organization. Understanding SCPs is crucial for securing your AWS organization. AWS Control Tower. Let's explore a simpler and more powerful way to create, govern, and administer large number of user accounts within AWS. AWS Control Tower is a service that offers a larger and more controlled method of creating, distributing, managing, and auditing multiple accounts. It simplifies the process of setting up a multi-account architecture that follows security and compliance best practices. The concept of a landing zone is crucial. It's a multi-account architecture based on a well-architectured framework focusing on security and compliance best practices. AWS Control Tower automatically creates a landing zone using best practices blueprints, setting up systems for identity, federation access, and overall account structure. AWS Control Tower also deploys guardrails, high-level security rules that provide continual oversight and help govern your accounts, users, groups, and resources. There are three types of guardrails, mandatory, strongly recommended and elective, each designed to enforce best practices and security measures. With AWS Control Tower, you can simplify the management of user accounts, ensure compliance and enhance security within your AWS environment. AWS Service Catalog. AWS Service Catalog is an organizational tool designed to simplify the provisioning and creation of IT stacks for both end users and IT admins. It allows users to select pre-approved services, reducing barriers to content creation and ens ensuring best practices and security system. Products are the heart of the AWS service catalog. They can range from a single AWS resource to a complex multi-tiered web application. Creating a product is simple. Just upload AWS cloud formation templates. Portfolios are collections of products with configuration information, and they can be customized for different users within your organization. Constraints allow you to control the scope and ability of your products based on predefined settings. Service actions enable end users to perform their own operational tasks, such as troubleshooting or running service level commands. And when it comes to pricing, there's a free tier that allows up to 1,000 API calls per month at no charge. With AWS Service Catalog, you have full control over what you, your end users have to access to, maintaining high levels of security and credibility. So let's explore cloud security in AWS. AWS is responsible for the security of the cloud including global infrastructure elements like region, availability zones, and edge locations, as well as the foundations of compute, storage, database, and network services. So once the data is put into the cloud, the responsibility shifts to the customer. It includes encryption, network traffic protection, operating system security, firewall configuration, 
application security and identity and access management. It's crucial to tighten security to minimize exposure to external threats. The level of additional security you implement in your decision depending on the nature of your business and existing controls in place. Remember, while AWS provides powerful security controls, how often and when to apply them is not AWS responsibility. The AWS shared responsibility model dictates which security controls are AWS responsibility and which are yours. In short, you decide how you want your resources to sit in the cloud while AWS guarantees the global security of the cloud. Security is AWS number one priority. It's an area into which AWS pours huge capital and energy and devotes near constant attention. AWS is certified and compliant across a huge range of security standards, including PCI, DSS, ISO, and SOC. To help provide a clear definition of the boundaries of responsibility, AWS has advised three main models, each representing where AWS and customer responsibilities start and end. Shared responsibility model for infrastructure services, container services, and abstract services. Understanding the AWS shared responsibility model is a crucial for building and maintaining a highly secure and reliable environment on the AWS cloud. Shared responsibility model infrastructure services. So now here you can see some customer responsibilities and AWS responsibilities. So you can pause the video to have a look at this image. So let's dive into introduction to security identity and compliance services in AWS, which includes finding compliance data with AWS artifact, managing users, groups and roles with AWS identity and access management or IAM, evaluating the security of your AWS environment using AWS trusted advisor. So AWS artifact. The self-service portal that provides immediate access to AWS security and compliance reports. To access AWS Artifact, simply search Artifact in the AWS console. From there, you can view reports and agreements. AWS Artifact reports includes ISO certifications, PSI and SOC reports, which are crucial for providing evidence of AWS security controls for compliance with governance regulations and frameworks. Remember, AWS is responsible for the underlying security of the cloud while you remain responsible for your systems and applications security in the cloud. In addition to reports, AWS Artifact allows you to view and execute legally binding agreements such as the AWS Business Associate addendum for storing personal health information. By using AWS Artifact, you can ensure that the solutions you architect in AWS Cloud remain secure and compliant with all necessary rules and regulations. Access AWS artifacts today to stay on top of your security and compliance needs. So let's dive into what Identity and Access Management IAM services actually means and how it's crucial for securing your AWS accounts. IAM involves two key stages, identity management and access management. Identity management is about defining how you are and verifying your identity. For example, your AWS username serves as your unique identity within IAM. Access management, on the other hand, focuses on authorization and access control. It determines what resources and identity can access within your AWS account. These include permissions for specific AWS resources such as EC2 or RDS. IAM utilizes various authentication methods 
including username and password, multi-factor authentication, and federated access. These mechanisms ensure secure access to AWS resources without compromising on identity verification. In essence, IAM empowers you to manage, control, and govern authentication, authorization, and access control mechanism within your AWS account. Understanding these security controls is vital for designing the right level of security for your infrastructure. Features and components of AWS IAM. Let's dive into the key aspects of these crucial service. So when accessing the IAM service through the AWS management control, you will be greeted with the IAM dashboard. Here you can customize a sign-in link for users, view a summary of your IAM resources, and access a list of IAM security best practices recommended by AWS. Under access management, we have components like users, user groups, roles, and policies. User represents identities and user groups are used to authorize access to resources. Roles allow temporary permissions and policies. Written as JSON documents define access rules. If you're looking to provide federated access, you can add an identity provider. Additionally, under account settings, you can enforce a password policy and configure the security token service for temporary credentials. Moving on to access reports, the access analyzer helps identifying external access to your resources, while the credential report provides a comprehensive overview of IAM users and their credentials. Understanding these features and components is crucial for maintaining robust security within your AWS account. AWS IAM User Console Dashboard. Let's dive into the key features and functionalities of this powerful tool. When you open the AWS IAM Dashboard and select Users, you will find a summary of key points of interest relating to your IAM users. These includes last activity, MFA status, password age, console access, and more. The dashboard provides detailed information such as the user's path, groups they belong to, last activity, MFA status, password age, console access, and more. These allow you to easily manage and monitor user accounts. You can also view and manage access keys, including the age, last used, and associated ARN. These helps ensure secure programmatic access to your AWS resources. In conclusion, the AWS IAM User Console Dashboard provides comprehensive insights and controls for managing user identities and access within your AWS environment. AWS Management Console. Where creating a new user is a simple process, let's dive into the steps to configure a new user. First, set the username up to 64 characters in length and select the AWS access type, either AWS Management Console Access or Programmatic Access. For Programmatic Access, an Access Key ID and Secret Access Key ID will be issued. If Console Access is required, define a Console Password for the user. You can attach permission policies to the user or inherit them from a group. Permission boundaries can also be applied to control the user's maximum permission level. Review and confirm the information submitted before creating the user. Once the user is created, download the security credentials via a CSV file containing the username, access keys, and console login link. Creating a new user in the AWS Management Console is quick and straightforward. IAM User Configuration and Security Options Let's dive into the additional features available for IAM users. In the IAM dashboard, we can view a user's details such as their ARN and creation time. We can also explore different tabs, starting with the permissions tab, which displays the policies the user is getting permissions from. We can set the user's permissions boundary 
generate policies based on the cloud trial events and add an inline policy for the user. Additionally, we can review the groups the user belongs to, manage tags and handle security credentials, including setting up MFA and managing access keys. The access advisor feature allows to review the services the user can access based on their permissions and the last time these services were accessed. This is crucial for ensuring users have the appropriate access. These are just a few key points to consider when configuring IAM user properties. Stay tuned for more insights on user management and security options. IAM user groups, a powerful feature that simplifies access management at scale. IAM user groups are objects that contain IAM users and have IAM policies associated with them. These policies can be AWS managed, customer managed or inline policies, allowing you to authorize access for members of the group to AWS resources. By applying permissions to a group instead of individual users, it becomes easy to modify permissions for multiple users at once, simplifying access management at scale. This is a security best practices that prevents the need to update permissions for each individual user. Creating a group is a simple three-step process. Give the group a meaningful name, add users to the group and attach permissions via policies. Once created, you can easily review its configurations, edit permissions, and see their details. IAM user groups are a game changer for managing multiple users in your AWS account. They streamline access management, reduce the risk of human error, and make it easy to modify permissions at scale. IAM roles work in AWS. Let's dive in and find out how they allow trusted users, AWS services and applications to adopt a set of temporary IAM credentials to access your AWS resources. IAM roles access identities, much like user do, and have permissions assigned to them defining what resources the roles can and can't access. Unlike users, IAM roles are designed to be assigned, assumed by multiple different entities as and when required. Roles are used for temporary access to gain access to resources, and each time the role is assumed by a user, an AWS service or an application, a new set of credentials is dynamically created for the duration of that session. IAM roles are generally used to grant temporary access for users to AWS resources that they don't normally require access to, to grant access for an IAM user in one account to access resources in another account. Or for an AWS service or an application that requires access to resources. Roles can be assumed by a user in the same AWS account, a user in a different AWS account, an AWS service such as EC2, or an external federated user to your AWS account. So, IAM roles provide a secure and flexible way to manage access to your AWS resources. So, ready to give a try? Let's dive into AWS IAM policy types. So let's explore the four main policy types within AWS IAM and clarify their distinct functions. Let's start with identity-based policies. These policies are attached to users, user groups or roles controlling their permissions. They can be managed or inline policies offering flexibility in permission management. Moving on to resource-based policies, unlike identity-based policies, these are associated with resources such as S3 buckets or IAM roles, defining access to the resource level. The next is we have permission boundaries. These policies set the maximum level of permission for a user or role acting as a guide rail to limit access. Lastly, we'll discuss service control policies. So SCPs are used 
at the AWS account level to define maximum permissions for all members, providing an additional layer of security. So by understanding these policy types, you can effectively manage permissions within your AWS environment. Let's dive into AWS Key Management Service, KMS, the essential tool for securing your data in the AWS environment. KMS is the backbone of encryption for AWS services, ensuring the security of your data at rest. It provides the means to generate and manage encryption keys, enabling you to protect your data across various AWS services. KMS is built on various key components, including AWS Managed, Customer Managed, and Data Keys, each serving a specific purpose in the encryption process. KMS seamlessly integrates with AWS CloudTrail, allowing you to track and audit the usage of your encryption keys, ensuring compliance and governance within your organization. In summary, KMS is the cornerstone of data security in AWS, providing the necessary tool to encrypt your data at rest and remain compliance with your organization. AWS Trusted Advisor your go-to tool for optimizing your AWS infrastructure. Let's explore the key components and benefits of these powerful service. AWS Trusted Advisor is a service that provides recommendations to optimize your AWS environment based on the best practices. It covers five categories, cost optimization, performance, security, fault tolerance, and service limits. Trusted Advisor offers over 115 different checks constantly updated to ensure the most accurate recommendations. It's important to note that access to these checks depends on your support plan with AWS. With a business and enterprise support plan, you gain access to a wealth of additional checks and features, including the ability to track changes, use the AWS support API, and integrate with Amazon CloudWatch. Even without the premium support plans, everyone can benefit from features like trusted advisor notifications, exclude items, action links, and access management. Whether you're looking to save cost, enhance performance, or bluster security, AWS Trusted Advisor is an indispensable tool for optimizing your AWS environment. AWS WF Service if you're delivering web content through CloudFront distributions, Amazon API Gateway, REST APIs, application load balancers, or AWS AppSync GraphQL APIs, implementing the AWS Web Application Firewall service is crucial for an additional layer of security. Without a web application firewall, your websites and web apps could be exposed to harmful traffic leading to potential security risks with significant financial and reputational impacts. The AWS Web Application Firewall helps prevent malicious attacks by common web attacks pattern, including those outlined in the OWASP top 10 list, such as SQL injection and cross-site scripting. In addition to custom criteria, such as filtering, requests based on source IP address or country of origin, AWS WF interacts with Amazon API Gateway, Amazon CloudFront, Application Load Balancer, and AWS AppSync to filter both HTTP and HTTPS requests, distinguishing between legitimate and harmful inbound requests. The essential components of AWS WF include web ACLs, rules, and rule groups. Web ACLs are associated with supported resources to determine safe web requests while rules contain specific controls and criteria checks. Rule groups, on the other hand, are a collection of rules that can be applied to different web ACLs as needed. By implementing AWF, AWS WF, you can mitigate vulnerability risks and protect your web application architecture with a quicker simpler and more manageable solution. So if you're ready to enhance the security of your web application, let's dive into the world of AWS WAF.
So overview of AWS Firewall Manager. If you're responsible for security across multiple AWS accounts, AWS Firewall Manager is a powerful tool to simplify your management and protection efforts. This service provides security protection for various resources across different AWS accounts, making it a crucial asset for organization with complex infrastructure. AWS Firewall Manager integrates with AWS WF, AWS Shield Advanced, AWS Network Firewall, VPC Security Groups, and Amazon Route 53 Resolver DNS Firewall. It also works closely with AWS organizations, which is essential for using Firewall Manager. So to start using Firewall Manager, you need to designate an AWS account as the Firewall Manager Administrator account and ensure it's part of an AWS organization with all features enabled. Enabling AWS config and sharing with AWS organizations are crucial steps in the step setup process. Finally, you must enable regions for firewall manager to manage resources within them. Once these initial steps are completed, they are ready to configure AWS Firewall Manager and its policies. So understanding DOS and DDoS attacks. So a denial of service DOS attack aims to deny users access to a computer system or application by overwhelming it with bogus requests, rendering it unable to function properly. In a distributed denial of service DDoS attack, multiple sources flood the target system with bogus requests, creating a massive volume of traffic that poses significant challenges for mitigation. DDoS attacks are exhausted through botnets, a network of compromised computers controlled by dot masters who can remotely send commands to launch coordinates attacks on specific targets. Some common types of DDoS attacks include ping flood, which overwhelms a victim's network with pings and SYN flood, which consumes server's resources to make the system unresponsive to legitimate traffic. Understanding these attacks is crucial for implementing effective network protection and business continuity plans. So stay informed and stay protected. So AWS Shield and its protection levels. So AWS Shield is a managed service designed to protect your AWS application resources from distributed denial of service attacks. It automatically detects threats that may impact your environment and integrates closely with other AWS security services like AWS Web Application Firewall and AWS Firewall Manager. AWS Shield offers two protection levels, standard and advanced. The standard level is free and provides protection against common layer 3 and layer 4 DDoS attacks, while the advanced level offers enhanced protection against a wider scope of AWS services, including layer 7 attacks. The advanced level includes features like the Shield Response Team, layer 7 protection, enhanced monitoring, Route 53 health checks, protection groups, cost protection, and integration with AWS Firewall Manager. While AWS Shield standard is free, AWS Shield Advanced comes with a cost of $3,000 per month. In addition to the data transfer out fees for all protected resources and requires a 12 month minimum subscription. Visibility and monitoring. Both levels provide insights into DDoS events but AWS Shield Advance offers additional monitoring features and the ability to gain visibility across multiple accounts. Amazon Inspector. Are you responsible for the security of applications, processes, and tools running on your EC2 instances? Amazon Inspector is here to help. Amazon Inspector offers a knowledge base with hundreds of rules mapped to common security compliance standards and vulnerability definitions. These rules are regularly updated by AWS security experts 
You can also install an agent in the operating system of an Amazon EC2 instance to monitor behavior like network, file system and process activity. With Amazon Inspector, you can automate vulnerability assessments to make security testing of EC2 instances a regular part of your cloud operations. These results in a prioritized list of findings ensuring the security of your EC2 instances. Amazon Inspector, your solution for protecting the security of your EC2 instances. Amazon Guard Duty, an intelligent threat detection service for your AWS accounts and workloads. Amazon Guard Duty uses trained machine learning models to identify suspicious user and resource behavior, providing accurate threat identification of your accounts, data and workflows. The service analyzes cloud trial logs, VPC flow logs and DNS query logs to identify issues worth looking into, ensuring comprehensive monitoring and protection. Guard duty classifies finding under three categories, low, medium and high severity, providing a clear overview of potential threats. In the AWS console, findings are color coded and marked with symbols based on their severity, making it easy to identify and prioritize potential threats. Amazon Guard Duty offers a reliable and efficient way to consistently monitor and protect your AWS accounts and workloads for suspicious activity. Have you ever wondered how to efficiently discover and analyze sensitive data stored in Amazon S3 buckets? Let me introduce you to Amazon Mackey a powerful tool that uses machine learning to do just that. Amazon Mackey leverages machine learning to scan S3 buckets and recognize critical private information such as personal identifiable information, credit card numbers, API keys and access credentials. It automatically tracks changes to buckets, making the discovery job significantly more efficient and scalable. Mackey provides a detailed list of findings displaying the severity finding type, affected source, resource, and last scan date. For example, it can identify objects with personal, financial, or credential related data and indicate the severity is high, medium, or low. With Amazon Mackey, you can run one time or automated data discovery and display the results to AWS Security Hub, ensuring the security of your sensitive data. So let's dive into building, pricing, and support resources in AWS, which includes AWS cost management tools such as Cost Explorer and AWS Cost and Usage Reports. The role of tags in cost allocation, AWS support, customer support resources, and support plans. The cost optimization in AWS. AWS offers fantastic opportunities for faster development, lower total cost of ownership, and increased agility. Whether you are a startup or a large corporation, AWS grows with your requirements and always provides exactly the services that are currently needed. When used correctly, of course, cost optimization helps you meet your financial and business objectives while only paying for what you need and use. It's not about using AWS as a traditional data center, but about being agile and investing time in innovation. So if you want to manage your resources and money appropriately and make economically wise decisions before expenses gets out of hand, cost optimization is the way to go. So the basics of cloud economics. So let's dive in, explore the value of cloud beyond just cost savings. One key aspect is the total cost of ownership. Cloud offers can achieve significant infrastructure cost savings through better supply and demand, matching elastic cost basis and the elimination of hardware maintenance programs. For example, companies have seen a 50% reduction in TCO. Another area of improvement is staff productivity 
efficiency can be boost, boosted through automation, the elimination of hardware related tasks and increased developer productivity. Some companies have saved over 500 hours per year in server configuration time. Operational resilience. Operational resilience is also a major benefit with improved availability, security and compliance. This includes reduced cost of planned and unplanned outages and an improved service level agreement. For instance, critical workloads run in multiple availability zones and regions for strong disaster recovery. Lastly, cloud economics can enhance business agility, loading to faster development of new features and applications. This is achieved through reduced time to market, increased operational agility and a faster space of innovation. Some companies have experienced a 75% launch of new products. In 2018, ITC found that companies using AWS saw a 62% more efficient IT infrastructure staff, nearly three times more features delivered, and 94% less time lost to unplanned downtime. Cloud economics is about more than just cost saving. With the right approach, the cloud can transform your entire business, making it more efficient and agile. Understanding Total Cost of Ownership, TCO. TCO stands for Total Cost of Ownership and is a comprehensive assessment of IT's total cost over time. These includes hardware and software acquisition, management and support, communications, end user expenses, and the opportunity cost of downtime, training, and other productivity losses. Using the cloud has greatly simplified the TCO assessments most traditional costs are included in the cloud service prices, reducing the number of factors to take into account. For example, facility costs like space, power and cooling are not a concern when using cloud resources. Understanding TCO is crucial for gaining a comprehensive overview of business cost and identifying potential issues and opportunities early on. Economies of scale at AWS. Economies of scale occurs when cost can be spread over a large number of customers. As more customers lead to higher AWS usage, more infrastructure is built, making the infrastructure cheaper and allowing for continuous price reductions. This cycle results in lower prices over time, benefiting both existing and new customers. With AWS, you can experience the advantages of economies of scale firsthand. AWS Cost Explorer, a powerful tool for cloud financial management within AWS. To access the Cost Explorer, head over to your billing dashboard and launch the tool. Once inside, you can visualize your usage patterns over time, identify underlying cost drivers and detect anomalies. The Cost Explorer allows you to analyze your cost by different services, view detailed data tables, and even export the data for further analysis in tools like Excel. You can customize the time frame, group your data based on specific cost or usage, and refine your data set using various filters to gain deeper insights into your costs. Explore advanced options such as viewing untagged resources, analyzing cost as unblended or amortized, and even including discounts in your cost analysis. In the AWS Cost Explorer, you can effectively manage your cloud financials, identify cost saving opportunities and optimize your cloud environment for efficiency. Understanding AWS Cost and Usage Reports. The AWS Cost and Usage Reports CUR, is crucial for capturing AWS billing data. It provides granular detailed insights into cost and usage data for all AWS resources. Enabling the CUR is essential for obtaining historical by the hour data, leading to accurate data, driven insights and trend analysis. To enable the CUR, 
Go to the AWS Management Console, navigate to the Building Dashboard and select the Cost and Usage Reports from the left menu. Enable the CUR, create a report and give it a name. It's advisable to include resources IDs for unique identification. Choose an S3 bucket to store the file, set a path and select the time granularity for the data. You can choose to export the files for Redshift or QuickSight usage, altering the output format to be readable for Athena, Redshift or QuickSight. Athena allows data analysis using standard SQL, while Redshift is a data warehouse service for acquiring big data sets. And QuickSight is a visually driven business intelligence service. After configuring the options, the CUR is set up, but it may take up to 24 hours for the first report to be delivered. Accept, expect minimal cost from S3 for storing the CUR data, depending on the file size. AWS budgets. Let's explore how to set up automatic notifications and actions with AWS budgets to stay on top of your costs. To get started, head to the building dashboard and click on budgets on the left. From there, you can create a new budgets and select from different types, such as cost budgets based on actual costs or usage budgets based on usage like yours. Once you have chosen the type, you can set a budget amount and define your budget thresholds. You can also configure notifications such as receiving an email when a threshold is reached. AWS cost allocation and usage reports. Let's dive into the world of AWS cost allocation and usage reports. To effectively allocate cost, AWS enables users to tag every available resources. Tags provides the functionality to define metadata in the form of key and value pairs associated with the resources in a cloud account. With AWS cost and usage reports, you can track monthly AWS cost and usage associated with your AWS account. These reports contain the widest variety of cost and usage data and can be configured to show only the data that you want using the AWS cost and usage API. So planning out a stagging strategy or standard is essential. It's best to keep tagging simple and easy to grasp and to adjust your tags to follow your KPIs once you determine them. In conclusion, with AWS cost and usage reports, you are able to store your report files in Amazon S3 buckets update the report automatically, and make use of the AWS CUR API for automation or easier management through API calls. So start tagging your resources and gain valuable insights into your AWS costs. So let's start with some common tags that are used by most organizations. Some examples include cost center for business unit tag used to show where resources costs are allocated within the organization. Another common tag is a service workload name tag, which shows which service the resources belongs to. Now let's look at some tagging best practices. First, align tags at your cost allocation strategy. Next, tag everything and find a purpose for each tag. Then limit the number of tags you adopt and keep it manageable. Consistency is key, so use a consistent naming convention. Automate tag management and set up policies to forbid launching untagged resources. Finally, audit and maintain your tag regularly to ensure their purpose and relevance. Apply these best practices to your business or organization for effective tag management. Overview of AWS Customer Support Plans Whether you are an individual, user or a large-scale enterprise, AWS has a support plan tailored to your needs. Let's walk through the different support plans offered by AWS. From the free basic plan to the enterprise plan for mission critical workloads, there's a plan for everyone. 
Each plan offers unique features from access to customer service and communities to health, status monitoring and notification. The availability of technical support, option for contacting support and response times vary with each plan. The severity levels and AWS response times differ for each plan from 12 hours for developers plans to 15 minutes for enterprise plans. The response times are tailored to the urgency of the case. All paid support plans receive some level of architectural guidance, but business enterprise on ramp and enterprise plan receives the most contextual support and specific guidance. Enterprise customers also have access to a pool of technical account managers and a concert support team for assistance account assistance. No matter the size of your organization or the complexity of your workload, AWS has a support plan to meet your needs. So essential AWS support resources. Whether you are new to AWS or a seasoned user, these resources can be invaluable for your cloud projects. The AWS Knowledge Center is a goldmine of support resources, including frequently asked questions, videos, and guidance for AWS services and cloud migrations. It's a one-stop shop for all your AWS support needs. AWS Professional Service or ProServes offers expert technical knowledge from your cloud projects, while the AWS Marketplace features software offerings from ISVs and AWS partners. These resources can streamline your AWS journey. In the unfortunate event of abuse and malicious activities involving your AWS resources, the AWS Trust and Safety team is there to provide assistance and support. There are just a few of many support resources available from AWS. Disaster Recovery Disaster recovery is all about restoring operations quickly with minimal data loss. These can due to catastrophic events like natural disaster or unauthorized access to resources. An effective backup strategy and redundant resources are crucial. RTO, recovery time objective, and RPO, recovery point objective matrix help establish the maximum tolerance level of business impact before regaining a stable operation state. There are a number of recovery strategies to consider when architecting in AWS for your DR plan to help you meet your RTO and RPO needs. These can be defined into four methods, with each one becoming more complex than the previous and usually more expensive, but with a decreased RTO and RPO at each stage. Backup and restore. This provides you with the highest RTO and RPO, and by high, I am referring to the time associated with your RTO and RPO metrics. Typically, a backup and restore provides in an RTO in 24 hours or less and your RPO in hours. Pilot light. This method decreases your RTO to a number of hours and RPO down to minutes. Warm standby. With warm standby, your RTO can be measured in minutes and your RPO in seconds. Multi-site active. This is the this is the most expensive recovery strategy. However, it does mean that both your RTO and RPO are close to zero. Introduction to Machine Learning and Analytics Services in AWS. These includes artificial intelligence and machine learning services like Amazon, SageMaker, Amazon Lex, and Amazon Kendra. Data analytics services in AWS such as Amazon Athena, AWS Glue and Amazon QuickSight. Let's dive into Amazon SageMaker and the machine learning workflow. At its core, Amazon SageMaker is a fully managed service that provides the tools to build, train and deploy machine learning models. It's where you go when you need to build, train and deploy models. SageMaker fits into the platform services range along with other popular services like Spark, EMR, Databricks, and Data Robot. It's the go-to platform for everyone from level two upwards who 
who is ready to start making their own tit models and prepping their own data. The machine learning in workflow involves four key steps, preparing data, building the model, managing its training, and deploying the model into a production environment. Each step is crucial for creating and maintaining effective machine learning models. Amazon Athena is a fully managed service that enables you to interactively query data, store it in an Amazon S3 data lake, as well as many other data sources, including data warehouses and big data repositories, all using standard structured query language or SQL syntax. These makes it easy to perform analysis on data sets up to petabytes in size without having to learn a new query language or provision and manage any infrastructure. Since Athena is serverless, you will only pay for the queries you run. Athena uses data definition language or DDL to define tables and supports querying data that stored in a variety of file formats, including CSV, JSON, and Parquet. Athena also provides many other features to help you analyze and query data, including the ability to specify partition keys, allowing you to query large data sets by any column, integration with EMR and Glue, which makes it easy to perform data lake analytics, as well as QuickSight and Redshift Spectrum to create powerful analytics pipelines and support for querying compressed data stored in S3, which can help reduce storage costs. AWS Glue, a fully managed ETL serverless architecture and tool that simplifies the process of categorizing, cleaning, enriching, and moving data reliably between various data sources. AWS Glue offers several key features, including the ability to create connections, use classifiers, and access the AWS Glue data catalog. The data catalog is a persistent metadata store for data assets containing table definitions, job definitions and other control information to help manage your AWS Glue environment. When creating an AWS Glue job, you can choose a data source and a data target, customize the job processing environment and specify how the job is invoked. The script is auto-generated and immediately available upon completion, completing the job creation wizard. AWS Glue offers benefits such as serverless architecture, autocode generation, and integration with outer tool chains via custom endpoints. Pricing is based on an hourly rate built by the second for clolers and ETL jobs, as well as a simple monthly fee for storing and accessing the metadata in the AWS Glue data catalog. While AWS Glue offers many advantages, it's important to consider when not to use it. Factors to consider include an op optionated nature of the technology, language limitations, and the maturity of the product. AWS Glue provides a powerful and cost-effective solution for ETL processes, offering a range of features and benefits to streamline data management. Amazon QuickSight. Are you looking for a powerful tool to visualize and analyze your data? Look no further than Amazon QuickSight. Amazon QuickSight allows you to easily process and analyze data sets from AWS and outside sources, creating detailed visualizations and sharing dashboards with anyone, regardless of their AWS knowledge. The work, typical workflow involves creating a new analysis, adding data sets, choosing fields, adding charts and insights, and finally publishing the analysis as a dashboard to share with others. With Amazon QuickSight, you can access, prepare, and report on your data, making better decisions based on your findings. So let's dive into the world of AWS App Config. I have a powerful tool within AWS System Manager. With AWS App Config, you can control the development of future flags and updates to applications running in AWS, ensuring they're always running in a desired state and changes are made predictably. AWS App Config allows you to create different application configuration, manage related configuration data, and apply updates to specific sets of instances before rolling them out to your entire fleet. 
It also integrates with CloudWatch alarms to roll back changes if an alarm is triggered during deployment. In addition, AWS app config provides ability to validate configuration, formats and values before deployment, as well as track and roll back configuration changes, ensuring a smooth deployment process. So if you're looking for a tool to easily and safely deploy application updates to AWS, while also providing powerful configuration, monitoring and troubleshooting capabilities, AWS app config is the solution for you. Are you looking to streamline your AWS operations? Let's talk about maximizing efficiency with the AWS command line interface CLI. Instead of manually performing tasks in the AWS console, consider scripting out commands and creating bash scripts for a more efficient and less error prone approach to working with AWS resources. By using the AWS CLI, you can make the same API calls as the AWS console but with the flexibility by accessing and managing resources through a terminal program. You can access the AWS CLI through various platforms, including a Linux shell, the Mac terminal, and EC2 instance are a program like Putty for PC users. Ready to take your AWS operations to the next level? Try out the AWS CLI for a more efficient and flexible resource management experience. AWS Cloud9, a cloud-based integrated deployment environment IDE that's changing the way developers work. AWS Cloud9 is a cloud-based IDE that allows you to write and debug code from any location as long as you have access to a supported browser and an internet connection. With Cloud9, you will create a development environment which is a server that stores your files and code for your project and an IDE that's tied to this environment. You can choose between an EC2 based environment where AWS manages and the instances and the tools for you, or an SSH environment where you manage your own servers and tools. Cloud9 offers a full featured IDE with real time peer programming, direct integration with AWS services and support for several serverless applications like AWS Lambda. The best part is there is no additional cost for Cloud9 itself, just the fees for the underlying servers. AWS Cloud Shell. AWS Cloud Shell is a browser-based Linux shell experience that provides secure, pre-authenticated access to AWS CLIs and other tools from within the AWS management console. It's a convenient and powerful tool that allows developers and administrators to interact with AWS services as the currently logged in user without needing to set up a local development environment. To access Cloud Shell from the AWS console, simply click the Cloud Shell icon in the top navigation bar. This icon will appear in any region where Cloud Shell is currently supported. Cloud Shell pre-configured environment includes the AWS CLI, CLIs for Elastic Beanstalk, ECS, and the AWS serverless application model, SAP, as well as commonly used command line tools like Python and Node.js. Plus, with up to one GB of persistent storage in your home directory, you can install any additional tools you may need. So if you're looking for a hassle-free way to interact with AWS services and tools, AWS Cloud Shell has got you covered. AWS X-Ray, analyze and debug production and distributed applications. AWS X-Ray is a distributed tracing system that helps developers analyze and debug production, distributed applications, such as those built using a microservices architecture. With X-Ray, you can understand how your application and its underlying services are performing to identify and troubleshoot the root cause of performing issues and errors. AWS X-Ray provides a complete view of request as they travel through your application and filters visual data across payloads, functions, traces, services, APIs, and more with no code and low code motions. AWS Code Build, a fully managed 
build service designed to streamline your development process. First, let's talk about the core concepts of code build. You will create a code build project, specify a build environment and define a build spec file to manage your build process. The build environment is crucial. You can choose a managed Docker image or create a custom one supporting various runtimes like Java, .NET Core, Python and more. Next, you will need to specify build commands. You can do this directly in code build or use a build spec file for more complex process. Finally, you will decide where to save your build artifacts, typically in an S3 bucket and monitor the build status using CloudWatch. And that's a wrap. AWS code build simplifies your build process, making development more efficient. Now let's dive into overview of AWS code commit. If you have ever spent time writing or maintaining code, you're probably already familiar with Git repositories. They enable multiple developers to work on the same code basis without overwriting each other code and provide versioning so that if something goes wrong, developers can roll back their code to a positive state. These Git repositories are hosted in source control services such as GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, and the star of the show today, AWS Code Commit. AWS Code Commit is a fully managed Git-based source control service. It's often the starting point with CI CD setups, kicking off other steps of the pipeline. It's a well integrated with AWS Code Build, AWS Code Deploy, and AWS Code Pipeline. Code Commit is designed to be simple from the infrastructure level to the service functionality, supporting all familiar Git commands and using the same technology as other popular source control systems use. When creating a repository, the only significant requirement is to give the new repository a name. There are three ways to connect to a repository via HTTPS, SSH or HTTPS. Code commit encrypts repository data in transit and at rest by default, integrates with IAM and provides fine-grained identity-based access to repositories. The pricing for this service is based on the number of active users of your repositories. For each active user, you receive an allowance of 10 GB month of storage and 2000 Git request for that month. AWS Code Deploy for CI CD Pipelines. Let's dive into the key concepts and terminology to understand how it streamlines application updates. AWS Code Deploy automates the deployment of built artifacts, ensuring quick and effortless application changes. It's designed to make new features available to end users as early as possible while avoiding system downtime. In code deploy, you will encounter three key terms, application, deployment group, and deployment. When using code deploy, the first step is to create an application and select the platform to deploy your code to EC2, on-premises, Lambda, or ECS. Regardless of the platform, you will need to specify the deployment configuration to control the speed of your deployment. Options include all at once, canary, and linear deployments, each offering different level of safety and control. For EC2 on-premises deployments, the code deploy agent is essential for communication with the service. Once the agent is installed, you can create a deployment using the selected deployment group and revision. Code deploy integrates with CloudWatch and SNS to notify you of changes in your environment, allowing you to detect and react to deployment events with AWS Code Deploy, you can streamline your CI CD pipeline and ensure efficient and reliable application updates. Automate your CI CD process with AWS Code Pipeline. Let's dive in and see how it all comes together. AWS Code Pipeline is the tool that brings it all together. Automating the orchestration of your entire process, it monitors your repository of changes, triggers the pipeline, runs code build, 
to generate a new artifact like a Docker image and then runs code deploy to push the generated image to your network infrastructure. Your pipeline can be customized to fit your specific needs. You can have different build and deploy stages using various sources like code commit, GitHub or Docker images and monitor everything with CloudWatch events. Once your pipeline is set up, any changes in your repository will automatically trigger the pipeline. Code build will generate the artifact and code deploy will handle the deployment, all seamlessly orchestrated by code pipeline. After the deployment, you can easily confirm the success of your deployment and see the results in the real time. AWS code pipeline is a powerful tool for orchestrating your CI CD process. Ready to streamline your CI CD process? Try AWS code pipeline today and experience the power of automated orchestration. AWS code star. Let's introduce you to AWS Cold Star, the tool that simplifies the process of setting up and creating a CI CD tool chain. AWS Cold Star is designed to take the pain out of building a full CI CD work workflow. It allows you to quickly launch from pre built CI CD workflow template tailored to the characteristics of your software development project. With AWS Cold Star, you can have a fully working CI CD tool chain or operational in a matter of minutes. It provides a unified single pane view of your build and deploy workflow, allowing you to focus on your energies on building new product features and shipping them faster to your customer base. CodeStar provides a step by step wizard driven process for provisioning a new project, allowing you to pick from pre-configured project templates and specify the attributes to your software project. You can set up and configure a team of users within your project, granting role-based access to other users with different roles like owner, contributor, and viewer. That's a wrap on this introduction to AWS CodeStar, ready to simplify your CI CD workflows. Amazon AppStream 2.0 and Amazon Workspace. Amazon AppStream 2.0 is a fully managed end user computing service that securely streams application and provides virtual desktops to users worldwide. It supports application running on both Windows Server and Amazon Linux too. Users can access their applications from anywhere using the AppStream 2.0 client or a web browser and authenticate using federated sign-in with any SAML 2.0 compliant identity provider. Amazon Workspaces provides users with persistent virtual desktops, allowing you to provision Windows, Amazon Linux, and Ubuntu Linux desktops. It's a rotest replacement for traditional desktops or VDI environments without the expense and labor required to maintain your own VDI solution. Workspace can be configured to automatically install patches and updates during predefined maintenance windows and can be provisioned with additional software such as Microsoft Office already installed. In summary, while both AppStream and Workspaces can be used for virtual desktops, AppStream is ideal for streaming individual applications, especially legacy ones, while Workspace is a more robust replacement for traditional desktops or VDI environments. Thank you for joining us for a quick introduction to Amazon AppStream 2.0 and Amazon Workspaces. AWS Amplify, your gateway to full stock application development on AWS. AWS Amplify provides a comprehensive set of tools and services for configuring, deploying and hosting applications that run on iOS, Android, React Native or the web all while utilizing AWS services. Amplify tools include an open source framework with libraries, user interface components, and a command line interface for building your application backend. It also offers built-in support for authentication, analytics, offline data, and push notifications. Amplify Studio, a visual design experience and a fully managed service for hosting, web apps, and static websites with full stock CI CD are also part of the package.
AWS Amplify boosts support for multiple frameworks and libraries. Figma integration for importing design prototypes into React code and integration with AWS device form for testing apps on real iOS and Android devices, as well as different web browsers. AWS AppSync, a fully managed service that simplifies the development of serverless GraphQL and pub sub APIs. AWS AppSync allows you to access data from multiple sources, including DynamoDB tables, Amazon OpenSearch service, or any HTTP data source, and combine them into a single network request. Plus, it offers server side in memory caching for low latency data access. One of the standout feature is its ability to automatically update data in real time across all connected clients using GraphQL subscriptions, providing a seamless and responsive user experience. And don't forget, you can configure real time updates without using GraphQL through AppSync's PubSub API wizard. With AppSync, you can integrate IAM rules for access control, Amazon Cognito user pools for authentication, and configure CloudWatch for logging and monitoring, and X-Ray for comprehensive tracing for your GraphQL APIs. Plus, it supports resolvers for custom business logic and advanced data processing using AWS Lambda as a proxy to your own custom data source. So if you're looking for a powerful, flexible, and user-friendly solution for developing APIs, AWS AppSync might just be the perfect fit for you. Let's dive into a view of Amazon Device Form. It's an app testing service that allows you to test and interact with your Android, iOS, and web apps on multiple devices simultaneously. With hundreds of iOS and Android devices to choose from, it's the perfect solution for all stages of application testing. Amazon Device Form offers flexible testing methods, including automated tests using built-in tests or custom scripts and manual testing with the remote access option. The service also provides secure testing environments, non-rooted iOS and Android devices, and the ability to catch potential issues during the development process. Say goodbye to the hassle of maintaining and updating physical testing devices. Try Amazon device form today and streamline your app testing process. AWS Internet of Things Services, IoT, IoT Core and IoT Greengrass. AWS IoT Core is a fully managed platform that connects IoT devices to the AWS cloud without the need to manage your own infrastructure. It includes a registry to enroll and track IoT devices, supports messaging infrastructure for secure and low latency message processing, and provides a rules engine for data processing. IoT Core supports popular communication protocols like MQTT and HTTPS. Now let's talk about AWS IoT Greengrass. It provides client software and an open source edge runtime environment for running IoT applications across entire fleets of devices. Greengrass enables processing data streams directly on IoT devices, implementing messaging between components and deploying secure over the air updates. So whether you're looking to connect IoT devices to the cloud or run IoT applications across fleets of devices, AWS IoT Core and IoT Greengrass have got you covered. As we have successfully completed the crash course of AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner exam, let's dive into 100 real exam question answers. Question number one, a company plans to use an Amazon Snowball Edge device to transfer files to the AWS cloud. Which activities related to a Snowball Edge device are available to the company at no cost? Option A, use of the Snowball Edge appliance for a 10 day period. Option B, the transfer of data out of Amazon S3 and to the Snowball Edge appliance. Option C, the transfer of data from the Snowball Edge appliance into Amazon S3. And option D, 
daily use of the snowball edge appliance after 10 days so the right answer here is option c data transfer into amazon s3 is zero per gb data transfer out of amazon s3 is priced by region So question number two, a company has deployed applications on Amazon EC2 instances. The company needs to access application vulnerabilities and must identify infrastructure deployments that do not meet best practices. Which AWS service can the company use to meet these requirements? And the options are AWS Trusted Advisor, Amazon Inspector, AWS Config, Amazon Guard Duty. So the right answer here is option B, Amazon Inspector. Amazon Inspector is an automated vulnerability management service that continually scans AWS workloads for software vulnerabilities and unintended network exposure. The key word here is vulnerabilities. Question number three, a company has a centralized group of users with large file storage requirement that have exceeded the space available on premises. The company wants to extend its file storage capabilities for this group while retaining the performance benefit of sharing content locally. What is the most operationally efficient AWS solution for this scenario? Option A, Create an Amazon S3 bucket for each user. Mount each bucket by using an S3 file system mounting utility. Option B, configure and deploy an AWS storage gateway file gateway. Connect each user's workstation to the file gateway. Option C, move each user's working environment to Amazon workspaces. Set up an Amazon WorkTalks account for each user. Option D, deploy an Amazon EC2 instance and attach an Amazon Elastic Block Store provided IOPS value. Share the EBS value directly with the users. So the right answer here is option B. Question number four, according to security best practices, how should an Amazon EC2 instance be given access to an Amazon S3 bucket? Option A, hard code an IAM user secret key and access key directly in the application and upload the file. Option B, store the IAM user secret key and access key in a text file on the EC2 instance, read the keys, then upload the file. Option C, have the EC2 instance assume a role to obtain the privileges to upload the file. And option D, modify the S3 bucket policy so that any service can upload to it at any time. So the right answer here is option C, have the EC2 instance assume a role to obtain the privileges to upload the file. Question number five, which option is a customer responsibility when using Amazon DynamoDB under the AWS shared responsibility model? Option A, physical security of DynamoDB. Option B, patching of DynamoDB. Option C, access to DynamoDB tables. And option D, encryption of data addressed in DynamoDB. So the right answer here is option C, access to DynamoDB tables. Under the AWS shared responsibility model, controlling and managing access to AWS services, including Amazon DynamoDB tables, is a customer responsibility. 
while AWS take care of the physical infrastructure, patching and encryption of data at rest in DynamoDB. Customers are responsible for setting up proper access controls, authentication and authorization to protect their data and resources. So question number six, which option is a perspective that includes foundational capabilities of the AWS Cloud Adaption Framework, AWS CAF? The options are sustainability, performance efficiency, governance, reliability. So the right answer here is option C, governance. The six AWS CEF prospectives are business, people, governance, platform, security, and operations. Question number seven. A company is running and managing its own Docker environment on Amazon EC2 instances. The company wants an alternative to help manage cluster size scheduling and environment maintenance which aws service meets these requirements and the options are aws lambda amazon rds aws fargate amazon athena so the right answer here is option c aws fargate aws fargate is a serverless Piazico Compute Engine that lets you focus on building applications without managing servers. AWS Fargate is compatible with both Amazon Elastic Container Service and Amazon Elastic Kubernetes Service. Question number eight. A company wants to run a NoSQL database on Amazon EC2 instances. Which task is the responsibility of AWS in this scenario? Option A, update the guest operating system of the EC2 instances. Option B, maintain high availability at the database layer. Option C, patch the physical infrastructure that hosts the EC2 instances. Option D, Configure the security group firewall. So the right answer here is option C. Patch the physical infrastructure that hosts the EC2 instances. Patch the physical infrastructure that hosts the EC2 instances. Guest operating system is always responsibility of customer and host of AWS. Question number nine, which AWS services or tools can identify resizing opportunities for Amazon EC2 instances? Choose two. And the options are AWS Cast Explorer, AWS Building Conductor, Amazon Code Guru, Amazon SageMaker, AWS Compute Optimizer. So the right answer here is option A and option E. AWS Cost Explorer and AWS Compute Optimizer. Question number 10. Which of the following are benefits of using AWS Trusted Advisor? Option A. Providing high performance container orchestration. Option B. Creating and rotating encryption keys. Option C. Detecting underutilized resources to save costs. Option D, improving security by proactively monitoring the AWS environment. Option E, implementing enforced tagging across AWS resources. So the right answer here is option C and option D. Benefits of Trusted Advisor. 
cost optimization, performance, security, fault tolerance, service quotas. Question number 11. Which of the following is an advantage that users experience when they move on-premises workloads to the AWS cloud? Option A. Elimination of expenses for running and maintaining data centers. Option B. Price discounts that are identical to discounts from hardware providers. Option C. Distribution of all operational controls to AWS. Option D. Elimination of operational expenses. So the right answer here is option A. Elimination of expenses for running and maintaining data centers. Question number 12. A company wants to manage deployed IT services and govern its infrastructure as a code templates. Which AWS service will meet this requirement? And the options are AWS Resource Explorer, AWS Service Catalog, AWS Organizations, AWS Systems Manager. So the right answer here is option B, AWS Service Catalog. AWS Service Catalog lets you centrally manage your cloud resources to achieve governance at scale of your infrastructure as code templates, written in cloud formation or Terraform configurations. With AWS Service Catalog, you can meet your compliance requirements while making sure your customers can quickly deploy the cloud resources they need. Question number 13, which AWS service or tool helps users visualize, understand and manage spending and usage over time? And the options are AWS organizations, AWS pricing calculator, AWS cost explorer, AWS service catalog. So the right answer here is option C. AWS Cost Explorer. AWS Cost Explorer has an easy to use interface that lets you visualize, understand and manage your AWS cost and usage over time. Get started quickly by creating custom reports that analyze cost and usage data. Analyze your data at a high level or dive deeper into your cost and usage data to identify trends, pinpoint cost drivers, and detect anomalies. Question number 14. A company is using a central data platform to manage multiple types of data to its customers. The company wants to use AWS services to discover, transform, and visualize the data. Which combination of AWS services should the company use to meet these requirements? Choose two. And the options are AWS Glue, Amazon Elastic File System, Amazon Redshift, Amazon QuickSight, Amazon Quantum Ledger Database. So the right answer here is Option A and Option D. AWS Glue is a serverless data integration service that makes it easier to discover, prepare, move and integrate data from multiple resources for analytics, machine learning and application development. Amazon QuickSight powers data-driven organizations with unified business intelligence at hyperscale with QuickSight, all users can meet varying analytic needs from the same source of truth 
through modern interactive dashboards, magnetic reports, computer analytics, and natural language queries. Question number 15. A global company wants to migrate its third party applications to the AWS cloud. The company wants help from a global team of experts to complete the migration faster and more reliable in accordance with AWS internal best practices. Which AWS service or resource will meet these requirements? And the options are AWS support, AWS professional services, AWS launch wizard, AWS managed services. So the right answer here is option B, AWS professional services. AWS partner network APN. Consulting partners help customers design, architect, build, migrate and manage workloads and applications on Amazon Web Services. Question number 16. An e-learning platform needs to run an application for two months each year. The application will be deployed on Amazon EC2 instances. Any application downtime during those two months must be avoided. Which EC2 purchasing option will meet these requirements most cost effectively? And the options are reserved instances, dedicated hosts, spot instances, on-demand instances. So the right answer here is option D, on-demand instances. On-demand instances are recommended for users that prefer the low cost and flexibility of EC2 without any upfront payment, upfront payment for long-term commitments applications with short-term, spiky or unpredictable workloads that cannot be interrupted, applications being developed or tested on EC2 for the first time. So question number 17. A developer wants to deploy an application quickly on AWS without manually creating the required resources. Which AWS service will meet these requirements? And the options are Amazon EC2, AWS Elastic Beanstalk, AWS Code Build, Amazon Personalize. So the right answer here is option B, AWS Elastic Beanstalk. With Elastic Beanstalk, you can quickly deploy and manage applications in the AWS cloud without having to learn about the infrastructure that runs those applications. Elastic Beanstalk reduces management complexity without restricting choice or control. You simply upload your application and Elastic Beanstalk automatically handles the details of capacity provisioning, load balancing, scaling and application health monitoring. Question number 18. The company is storing sensitive customers' data in an Amazon S3 bucket. The company wants to protect the data from accidental deletion or overriding. Which S3 feature should the company use to meet these requirements? We have the following four options. S3 lifecycle rules, S3 versioning, S3 bucket policies, S3 server-side encryption. So the right answer here is option B, S3 versioning. Versioning in Amazon S3 is a means of keeping multiple variants of an object in the same bucket. You can use the S3 versioning feature to preserve, retrieve and restore every version of every object stored in your buckets. Versioning enable buckets can help you recover objects from accidental deletion or override. 
for example if you delete an object amazon s3 inserts a delete marker instead of removing the object permanently question number 19 which AWS service provides the ability to manage infrastructure as code? And the options are AWS Code Pipeline, AWS Code Deploy, AWS Direct Connect, AWS Cloud Formation. So the right answer here is option D, AWS Cloud Formation. AWS Cloud Formation lets you model, provision, and manage AWS and third-party resources by treating infrastructure as code. Question number 20. An online gaming company needs to choose a purchasing option to run its Amazon EC2 instances for one year. The web traffic is consistent and any increase in traffic are predictable. The EC2 instances must be online and available without any disruption. Which EC2 instances purchasing option will meet these requirements most cost effectively? And the options are on-demand instances, reserved instances, spot instances, spot fleet. So the right answer here is option B, reserved instances. Amazon EC2 reserved instances provide a significant discount compared to on-demand prices, pricing and provide a capacity reservation when used in a specific availability zone. Question number 21, which AWS service or feature allows a user to establish a dedicated network connection between a company's on-premises data center and the AWS cloud? And the options are AWS Direct Connect, VPC Peering, AWS VPN, Amazon Route 53. So the right answer here is option A, AWS Direct Connect. Create a dedicated network connection to AWS. The AWS Direct Connect cloud service is the shortest path to your AWS resources. While in transit, your network traffic remains on the AWS global network and never touches the public internet. Question number 22, which option is a physical location of the AWS global infrastructure? The options are AWS Data Sync, AWS Region, Amazon Connect, AWS Organizations. So the right answer here is option B, AWS Region. AWS has the concept of a region which is a physical location around the world where we cluster data centers. Question number 23. A company wants to protect its AWS cloud formation systems and assets while performing risk assessment and mitigation tasks. Which pillar of the AWS well-architected framework is supported by these goals? And the options are reliability, security, operational excellence, performance efficiency. So the right answer here is option B, security. So this is conclusion of security pillar. Help you build and operate architectures that protect information systems and assets while delivering business value.
Question number 24. What is the purpose of having an internet gateway within a VPC? Option A. To create a VPN connection to the VPC. Option B. To allow communication between the VPC and the internet. Option C. To impose bandwidth constraints on internet traffic. Option D. To load balanced traffic from the internet across Amazon EC2 instances. So the right answer here is option B. To allow communication between the VPC and the internet. An internet gateway is a horizontally scaled, redundant, and highly available VPC component that allows communication between your VPC and the internet. Question number 25. A company is running a monolithic on-premises application that does not scale and is difficult to maintain. The company has a plan to make great application to AWS and divide the application into microservices. Which best practice of the AWS well-architected framework is the company following with this plan? Option A, integrate functional testing as part of AWS deployment. Option B, use automation to deploy changes. Option C, deploy the application to multiple locations. Option D, implement loosely coupled dependencies. So the right answer here is option D, implement loosely coupled dependencies. Dependencies such as queuing systems, streaming systems, workflows, and load balancers are loosely coupled. Loose coupling helps isolate behavior of a component from other components that depend on it increasing res resiliency and agility. Question number 26. A company has an AWS account. The company wants to audit its password and access key rotation details for compliance purposes. Which AWS service or tool will meet this requirement? And the options are IAM Access Analyzer, AWS Artifact, IAM Credential Report, AWS Audit Manager. So the right answer here is option C, IAM Credential Report. You can use credential reports to assist in your auditing and compliance efforts you can use the report to audit the effects of credential lifecycle requirements such as password and access key updates. Question number 27. The company wants to receive a notification when a specific AWS cost threshold is reached. Which AWS services or tools can the company use to meet these requirements? Choose two. The options are Amazon Simple Queue Service, AWS Budgets, Cost Explorer, Amazon CloudWatch, AWS Cost and Usage Report. So the right answer here is option B and option D. AWS Budgets and Amazon CloudWatch. Question number 28. Which AWS service or resource provides answers to the most frequently asked security related questions that AWS receives from its users? The options are AWS Artifact, Amazon Connect, AWS Chatbot, AWS Knowledge Center. So the right answer here is option D, AWS Knowledge Center. The AWS Knowledge Center is a comprehensive resource that provides answers to the most frequently asked security related questions that AWS receives from its users. It is a central repository of security information and guidance covering a wide range of topics. Question number 29. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी नाइन विच टास्क आर कस्टमर्स रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज अकॉर्डिंग टू द ए डब्ल्यू एस शेयर रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी मॉडल चूज टू ऑप्शन ए कॉन्फिगर द ए डब्ल्यू एस प्रोवाइडेड सिक्योरिटी ग्रुप फायर वॉल ऑप्शन बी क्लासिफाई कंपनी असेट्स इन द ए डब्ल्यू एस क्लाउड ऑप्शन सी डिटरमाइन विच अवेलेबिलिटी जोन टू यूज फॉर अमेजॉन एस थ्री बकेट्स ऑप्शन डी पैच और अपग्रेड अमेजॉन डायनेमो टी बी ऑप्शन ई सेलेक्ट अमेजॉन ई सी टू इंस्टेंसेस टू रन ए डब्ल्यू एस लैम डॉन सो द राइट आंसर हियर इज ऑप्शन ए एंड ऑप्शन बी क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टीन विच आर द फॉलोइंग आर पिलर्स ऑफ द ए डब्ल्यू एस वेल आर्किटेक्टेड फ्रेमवर्क चूज टू द ऑप्शन आर अवेलेबिलिटी रिलायबिलिटी स्केलेबिलिटी रेस्पॉन्सिव डिजाइन ऑपरेशनल एक्सलेंस सो द राइट आंसर हियर इज ऑप्शन बी एंड ऑप्शन ई रिलायबिलिटी एंड ऑपरेशनल एक्सलेंस ए डब्ल्यू एस वेल आर्किटेक्टेड हेल्प क्लाउड आर्किटेक्ट बिल्ड सिक्योर हाई परफॉर्मिंग resilient and efficient infrastructure for a variety of applications and workloads built around six pillars operational excellence security reliability performance efficiency cost optimization and sustainability question number 31 which aws service or feature is used to send both text and email messages from distributed applications option a amazon simple notification service option b amazon simple email service option c amazon cloud watch alerts and option d amazon simple queue service so the right answer here is option a amazon simple notification service Amazon Simple Notification Service sends notifications two ways, A to A and A to B. A to A provides high throughput push-based many-to-many messaging distrib between distributed systems, microservices, and event-driven serverless applications. These applications include Amazon Simple Queue Service, Amazon Kinesis Data Firehose, AWS Lambda, and other HTTPS endpoints. A to B functionality lets you send messages to your customers with SMS text, push notifications, and email. Question number thirty-two: A user needs programmatic access to AWS resources through the AWS CLI or the AWS API. Which option will provide the user with the appropriate access and the options are amazon inspector access keys ssh public keys aws key management service keys so the right answer here is option b access keys access keys are long term credentials for an iam user or the aws account root user you can use access keys to sign programmatic request to the aws cli or aws api question number 33 the company runs thousands of simultaneous simulations using aws batch Each simulation is stateless, is fault tolerant, and runs for up to three hours. Which pricing model enables the company to optimize cost and meet these requirements? The options are reserved instances, spot instances, on-demand instances, dedicated instances. So the right answer here is option B, spot instances. Spot instances are good fit for stateless, fault tolerance, 
workloads that can be interrupted without any impact on the overall job. Question number 34. What does the concept of agility mean in AWS cloud computing? Choose two. And we have the following five options. Option A, the speed at which AWS resources are implemented. Option B, the speed at which AWS creates new AWS regions. Option C, the ability to experiment quickly. Option D, the elimination of wasted capacity. Option E, the low cost of entry into cloud computing. So the right answer here is option A and option C. Question number 35, a company needs to block SQL injection attacks. Which AWS service or feature can meet these requirements? And the options are AWS WAF, AWS Shield, Network ACLs, Security Groups. So the right answer here is option A, AWS WAF. AWS WAF helps you protect against common web exploits and bots that can affect availability, compromise security, or consume excessive resources. Question number 36, which AWS service or feature identifies whether an Amazon S3 bucket or an IAM role has been shared with an external entity? Option A, AWS Service Catalog. Option B, AWS Systems Manager. Option C, AWS IAM Access Analyzer. And Option D, AWS Organizations. So the right answer here is Option C, AWS IAM Access Analyzer. IAM Access Analyzer helps identify resources in your organization and accounts that are shared with an external entity. Question number 37. A cloud practitioner needs to obtain AWS compliance reports before migrating an environment to the AWS cloud. How can these reports be generated? Option A, contact the AWS compliance team. Option B, download the reports from AWS Artifact. Option C, open a case with AWS support. Option D, generate the reports with Amazon Mackey. So the right answer here is Option B, download the reports from AWS Artifact. AWS Artifact is a portal that provides access to various compliance reports, including certifications, attestations, and other relevant documents. You can download these reports directly from AWS Artifact. Question number 38. An e-commerce company has migrated its IT infrastructure from an on-premises data center to the AWS cloud, which cost is the company's direct responsibility? Option A, cost of application software licenses. Option B, cost of the hardware infrastructure on AWS. Option C, cost of power for the AWS servers. And option D, cost of physical security for the AWS data center. So the right answer here is, Option A, cost of application software licenses.
question number 39 a company is setting up aws identity in access management on an aws account which recommendation compiles complies with iam security best practices option a use the account root user access keys for administrative tasks option b grant broad permissions so that all company employees can access the resources they need option c turn on multi-factor authentication for added security during the login process option d avoid rotating credentials to prevent issues in production applications so the right answer here is option c enabling multi-factor authentication for user accounts especially for users with administrative or high privilege access is a crucial security best practice mfa adds an additional layer of security by requiring users to provide two or more verification factors something they know like a password or something they have like a temporary mfa code from a hardware token or mobile before gaining access this significantly reduces the risk of unauthorized access even if login credentials are compromised question number 14 elasticity in the aws cloud refers to which of the following choose two option a how quickly an amazon ec2 instance can be restarted option b the ability to right size resources as demand shifts option c the maximum amount of ram an amazon ec2 instance can use option d the pay as you go billing model option e how easily resources can be produced when they are needed so the right answer here is option b and option e elasticity is the ability to add and release resources as business needs change it has nothing to do with pricing question number 41 which service enables customers to audit api calls in their aws accounts and the options are aws cloud trial AWS Trusted Advisor, Amazon Inspector, AWS X-Ray. So the right answer here is option A, AWS Cloud Trial. AWS Cloud Trial is a service that records all API calls made on your AWS account. It provides a detailed history of events, including who made the call, what actions were performed, and from which IP address the call originated. This audit trail is valuable for security, compliance, troubleshooting, and monitoring purposes, and it helps you maintain visibility into how your AWS resources are being used. Question number 42. What is a customer responsibility when using AWS Lambda according to the AWS shared responsibility model? Option A, managing the code within the Lambda function. Option B, confirming that the hardware is working in the data center. Option C, patching the operating system. Option D, shutting down Lambda functions when they are no longer in use. So the right answer here is, Option A, managing the code with the Lambda function. In the AWS shared responsibility model, AWS is responsible for the infrastructure and security of the cloud, while customers are responsible for the security in the cloud. When using AWS Lambda, customers are responsible for managing the code and configuration within the Lambda function these includes writing and updating the code, configuring the functions, 
execution environment and ensuring that the code complies with security best practices and is free from vulnerabilities. Question number 43. A company has 5 terabyte of data stored in Amazon S3. The company plans to occasionally run queries on the data of for analysis. Which AWS service should the company use to run these queries in the most cost effective manner? And the following options are Amazon Redshift, Amazon Athena, Amazon Kinesis, Amazon RDS. So the right answer here is option B, Amazon Athena. Amazon Athena is a serverless interactive analytics service built on open source framework supporting open table and file formats. Athena provides a simplified, flexible way to analyze petabytes of data where it lives. Analyzed data are built applications from an Amazon simple storage service, Data Lake, and 30 data sources, including on-premises data sources or other cloud systems using SQL or Python. Athena is built on open source Trino and Presto engines and Apache Spark frameworks with no provisioning or configuration effort required. Question number 44, which AWS service can be used at no additional cost? And the options are Amazon SageMaker, AWS Config, AWS Organizations, Amazon CloudWatch. So the right answer here is option C, AWS Organizations. AWS Organizations is an account management service that enables you to consolidate multiple AWS accounts into an organization that you create and centrally manage. AWS Organizations is offered at no additional charge. You are charged only for AWS resources that uses and roles in your member account you accounts use. For example, you are charged the standard fees for Amazon EC2 instances that are used by users or roles in your member's account. Question number 45, which AWS cloud adoption framework capabilities belongs to the people prospective? The options are data architecture, event management, cloud fluency, strategic partnership. So the right answer here is option C, cloud fluency. Question number 46, a company wants to make an upfront commitment for continued use of its production, Amazon EC2 instances in exchange for a reduced overall cost. Which pricing options meet these requirements with the lowest cost? Choose two. And the options are spot instances, on-demand instances, reserved instances, savings plans, dedicated hosts. So the right answer here is option C and option D. Reserved instances provide a significant discount compared to on-demand pricing in exchange for a one-time upfront payment and or a lower hourly rate. The more you commit, the greater the discount. Option D, savings plans. Savings plans offers flexible pricing and savings on your AWS usage with discounts of up to 72% compared to on-demand pricing. With savings plans, you commit to a certain amount of usage for a one or three year term and receive a lower rate for, the, for that usage. Question number 47. A company wants to migrate its on-premises relational databases to the AWS cloud. The company wants to use infrastructure as close to its current geographical location as possible. 
which AWS service or resource should the company use to select its Amazon RDS deployment area? And the options are Amazon Connect, AWS Wavelength, AWS Regions, AWS Direct Connect. So the right answer here is option C, AWS Regions. AWS Connect, Customer Service Cloud Contact Center, AWS Wavelength 5G Devices, AWS Direct Connect, Dedicated Network Connection, Bypass Public Network. Question number 48, a company is exploring the use of the AWS Cloud and needs to create a cost estimate for a project before the infrastructure is provisioned. Which AWS service or feature can be used to estimate cost before deployment? Option A, AWS Free Tire. Option B, AWS Pricing Calculator. Option C, AWS Billing and Cost Management. Option D, AWS Cost and Usage Report. So the right answer here is option B, AWS Pricing Calculator. AWS Pricing Calculator is a web-based planning tool that you can use to create estimates for your AWS use cases. You can use it to model your solutions before building them. Explore the AWS service price points and review the calculations beyond, behind your estimates. Question number 49. A company is building an application that needs to deliver images and videos globally with minimal latency. Which approach can the company use to accomplish these in a cost-effective manner? A. Deliver the content through Amazon CloudFront. Option B. Store the content on Amazon S3 and enable S3 cross-region replication. Option C. Implement a VPN across multiple AWS regions. Option D. Deliver the content through AWS private link. So the right answer here is option A. Deliver the content through Amazon CloudFront. Securely deliver content with low latency and high transfer speeds. Question number 15. Which option is a benefit of the economies of scale based on the advantages of cloud computing? Option A, the ability to trade variable expenses for fixed expenses. Option B, increased speed and agility. Option C, lower variable cost over fixed costs. Option D, increased operational cost over across data centers. So the right answer here is option C lower variable cost over fixed costs. Benefit from massive economies of scale. By using cloud computing, you can achieve a lower variable cost than you can get on your own because usage from hundreds of thousands of customers is aggregated in the cloud. Providers such as AWS can achieve higher economies of scale, which translates into lower pay-as-you-go prices. Question number 51, which of the following is a software development framework that a company can use to define cloud resources as code and provision the resources through AWS cloud formation? Options are AWS CLI, AWS Developer Center, AWS Cloud Development Kit, AWS CodeStar. So the right answer here is option C, AWS Cloud Development Kit. AWS CDK is a software development framework that enables developers to define infrastructure as code using familiar programming languages like TypeScript, Python, Java, c -sharp, and more. With AWS CDK, you can define cloud resources, their relationships, and provisioning logic in your preferred programming language. AWS CDK also generates cloud formation templates based on your code making it easier to manage and deploy infrastructure resources in AWS.
Question number 52. A company is developing an application that uses multiple AWS services. The application needs to use temporary limited privilege credentials for authentication with other AWS APIs. Which AWS service or feature should the company use to meet these authentication requirements? Option A, Amazon API Gateway. Option B, IAM Users. Option C, AWS Security Token Service. Option D, IAM Instance Profiles. So the right answer here is option C, AWS Security Token Service. AWS provides AWS Security Token Service as a web service that enables you to request temporary limited privilege credentials for users. Question number 53, which AWS service is a cloud security posture management service that aggregates alerts from various AWS services and partner products in a standardized format? And the options are AWS Security Hub, AWS Trusted Advisor, Amazon Event Bridge, Amazon Guard Duty. So the right answer here is option A, AWS Security Hub. AWS Security Hub is a cloud security posture management service that performs automated continuous security best practices checks against your AWS resources to help you identify misconfigurations and aggregates your security alerts in a standardized format so that you can more easily enrich, investigate and remediate them. Question number 54. Which AWS service is always provided at no charge? The options are Amazon S3, AWS Identity and Access Management, Elastic Load Balances, AWS WAF. So the right answer here is option B, AWS Identity and Access Management. IAM is a feature of your AWS account and is offered at no additional charge. Question number 55. To reduce cost, a company is planning to migrate a NoSQL database to AWS. Which AWS service is fully managed and can automatically scale through capacity to meet database workload demands and the options are Amazon Redshift, Amazon Aurora, Amazon DynamoDB, Amazon RDS. So the right answer here is option C, Amazon DynamoDB. Amazon DynamoDB is a fully managed NoSQL database service that provides fast and predictable performance with seamless scalability. Question number 56. A company is using Amazon DynamoDB. Which task is the company's responsibility according to the AWS shared responsibility model? And the options are option A, patch the operating system. Option B, provision hosts. Option C, manage database access permissions. And option D, secure the operating system. So the right answer here is option C, manage database access permissions. Question number 57. A company has a test AWS environment. A company is planning on testing an application within AWS. Application testing can be interrupted and does not need to run continuously. Which Amazon EC2 purchasing option will meet the requirements most cost effectively? And the options are on-demand instances, dedicated instances, spot instances, reserved instances. So the right answer here is option C, spot instances.
question number 58 which aws service gives users the ability to discover and protect sensitive data that is stored in amazon s3 buckets and the options are amazon mackey amazon detective amazon guard duty aws iem access analyzer so the right answer here is option a amazon mackey Amazon Mackey is a data security service that discovers sensitive data using machine learning and pattern matching, provides visibility into data security risks, and enables you to automate protection against those risks. Question number 59. Which of the following services can be used to block network traffic to an instance? Choose two. The options are security groups, Amazon Virtual Private Cloud, Flow Logs, Network ACLs, Amazon CloudWatch, AWS Cloud Trial. So the right answer here is option A and option C, security groups and network ACLs. Security groups are stateful firewalls that control inbound and outbound traffic at the instance level. You can configure security groups to allow or deny specific types of network traffic to and from your instances. Network ACLs are stateless firewall that control traffic at the subnet level. Network ACLs define rules to allow or deny traffic based on source and destination IP addresses, ports, and protocols. Question number 60, which AWS service can identify when an Amazon EC2 instance was terminated? And the options are option A, AWS Identity and Access Management, option B, AWS Cloud Trial, option C, AWS Compute Optimizer, and option D, Amazon Event Bridge. So the right answer here is option B, AWS Cloud Trial. AWS Cloud Trial is a service that records all API activity in your AWS account, including the termination of EC2 instances. It creates log entries for various events, providing an audit trail of actions taken on resources. By reviewing Cloud Trial logs, you can identify when an EC2 instance was terminated, who initiated the termination, and other relevant details about the event. Question number 61, which of the following is a fully managed MySQL compatible database? And the options are Amazon S3, Amazon DynamoDB, Amazon Redshift, Amazon Aurora. So the right answer here is option D, Amazon Aurora. Amazon Aurora is a relational database service that is compatible with MySQL and PostgreSQL. It is fully managed by AWS and is designed for high availability, performance and scalability while maintaining MySQL compatibility. Aurora offers features like automated backups, read replicas, and seamless failure to ensure data durability and availability. It's a popular choice for applications that require a MySQL compatible database with the benefits of a fully managed service. Question number 62, which AWS service supports a hybrid architecture that gives users the ability to extend AWS infrastructure, AWS services, APIs and tools to data centers, co-location environments or on-premises facilities? The options are AWS No Mobile, AWS Local Jones, AWS Outpost, and AWS Fargate. So the right answer here is option C, AWS Outposts. 
AWS outputs enable you to run AWS infrastructure and services on premises while seamlessly connecting to the AWS cloud. This service extends the AWS ecosystem to your own premises locations, allowing you to take advantage of cloud benefits while addressing the requirements of data residency, low latency applications and specific regulatory needs in hybrid environments. Question number 63, which AWS service can run a managed PostgreSQL database that provides online transaction processing OLTP? And the options are Amazon DynamoDB, Amazon Athena, Amazon RTS, Amazon EMR. So the right answer here is option C, Amazon RTS. Amazon RTS supports various database engines, including PostgreSQL and offers a managed database service suitable for OLTP workloads. With Amazon RTS for PostgreSQL, you can easily set up, operate and scale a PostgreSQL database without the administrative overhead of managing the infrastructure. Question number 64. A company wants to provide managed Windows virtual desktops and applications to its remote employees over secure network connections. Which AWS services can the company use to meet these requirements? Choose two. And the options are Amazon Connect, Amazon AppStream, Amazon Workspaces, AWS Site-to-Site -Site VPN, Amazon Elastic Container Service, Amazon ECS. So the right answer here is option B and option C, Amazon AppStream 2.0, Amazon Workspaces. Amazon AppStream 2.0 is a service that enables you to stream desktop applications to users through web browsers. You can deliver Windows applications securely to remote users without the need to provision and manage full virtual desktops. Option C. Amazon Workspaces is a fully managed desktop as a service solution that provides a Windows desktop to users. You can configure and manage virtual desktops for remote employees using Workspaces. Question number 65. A company wants to monitor for misconfigured security groups that are allowing unrestricted access to specific ports. Which AWS service will meet this requirement? The options are AWS Trusted Advisor, Amazon CloudWatch, Amazon Guard Duty, AWS Health Dashboard. So the right answer here is option A, AWS Trusted Advisor. Unrestricted access check security groups for rules that allow unrestricted access to a resource Unrestricted access increase opportunities for malicious activities. For more details, see the trusted advisor frequently asked questions. Question number 66. Which AWS service is a key value database that provide sub millisecond latency on a large scale? The options are Amazon DynamoDB, Amazon Aurora, Amazon DocumentDB, Amazon Neptune. So the right answer here is option A, Amazon DynamoDB. Because Amazon DynamoDB is a non-relational database that delivers reliable performance at any scale, it's a fully managed multi-region, multi-master database that provides consistent single digit millisecond latency and offers built-in security backup and restore and in-memory catching. Question number 67, which AWS services or features provide disaster recovery solutions for Amazon EC2 instances? Choose two and the options are EC2 reserved instances, EC2 Amazon machine images, Amazon elastic block store snapshots, AWS shield, Amazon guard duty. 
So the right answer here is option B and option C. EC2 machine, Amazon machine images, and Amazon elastic block store snapshots. Amazon machine images are used to create backups of EC2 instances and they can be used to launch replacement instances in the event of a disaster or data loss. AMIs are essential for creating recovery points for your EC2 instances. EBS snapshots allow you to create point in time backups for your EBS volumes. These snapshots can be used to restore data or create new EBS volumes making them a key component of disaster recovery for EC2 instances. Question number 68, which AWS service provides command line access to AWS tools and resources directly from a web browser? And the options are AWS Cloud HSM, AWS Cloud Shell, Amazon Workspaces, AWS Cloud Map. So the right answer here is option B, AWS Cloud Shell. Using AWS Cloud Shell, a browser-based shell, you can quickly run scripts with the AWS command line interface experiment with service APIs using the AWS CLI and use other tools to increase your productivity. The Cloud Shell icon appears in AWS region where Cloud Shell is available. Question number 69, a network engineer needs to build a hybrid cloud architecture connecting on-premises network to the AWS cloud using AWS Direct Connect. The company has a few VPCs in a single AWS region and expects to increase the number of VPCs to hundreds over time. Which AWS service or feature should the engineer use to simplify and scale these connectivity as the VPCs increase in number? And the options are VPC endpoints, AWS Transit Gateway, Amazon Route 53, AWS Secrets Manager. So the right answer here is option B, AWS Transit Gateway. AWS Transit Gateway connects your Amazon virtual private clouds and on-premises networks through a central hub. These connections simplifies your network and puts an end to complex peering relationships. Transit Gateway acts as a highly scalable cloud router. Each new connection is made only once. Question number 70. A company wants to establish a schedule for rotating database user credentials. Which AWS service will support this requirement with the least amount of operational overhead? And the options are AWS Systems Manager, AWS Secrets Manager, AWS License Manager, AWS Managed Services. So the right answer here is option B, AWS Secrets Manager. AWS Secrets Manager helps you manage, retrieve, and rotate database credentials, API keys, and other secrets throughout their life cycles. Question number 71. Which AWS service is used to provide encryption for Amazon EBS? And the options are AWS Certificate Manager, AWS Systems Manager, AWS KMS, AWS config. So the right answer here is option C, AWS KMS. AWS key management service lets you create, manage and control cryptographic keys across your applications and AWS services.
Question number 72. A company wants to manage its AWS cloud resources through a web interface. Which AWS service will meet this requirement? And the options are AWS Management Console, AWS CLI, AWS CDK, AWS Cloud9. So the right answer here is option A, AWS Management Console. The AWS Management Console is a web application that comprises and refers to a broad collection of service consoles for managing AWS resources. Question number 73. Which of the following are advantages of the AWS Cloud? Choose two. And the options are option A, trade variable expenses for capital expenses. Option B, high economy of scale. Option C, launch globally in minutes. Option D, focus on managing hardware infrastructure. Option E, over provision to ensure capacity. So the right answer here is option B and option C. High economy of scale, launch globally in minutes. Ability to quickly change required capacity. With the AWS Cloud, users can easily scale their infrastructure up or down based on demand. This flexibility allows for rapid ad adjustments of resources to match application needs, enabling cost optimization and efficient resource utilization. High economy of scale, AWS operates at a large scale, serving millions of customers globally. This scale allows AWS to achieve cost efficiencies and pass on the benefits to customers. By leveraging AWS services, users can access enterprise-grade infrastructure and services without the need for significant upfront investment in hardware or infrastructure. Question number 74. Which AWS cloud benefit is shown by an architecture's ability to withstand failures with minimal downtime? And the options are agility, elasticity, scalability, high availability. So the right answer here is option D, high availability. The ability of an architecture to withstand failures with minimal downtime is a characteristic of high availability. High availability ensures that your system remains operational and accessible even in the face of component failures. This is critical for maintaining a reliable and responsive application or service. Question number 75, a developer needs to maintain a development environment infrastructure and a production environment infrastructure in a repeatable fashion. Which AWS service should the developer use to meet these requirements? And the options are AWS Ground Station, AWS Shield, AWS IoT Device Defender, and AWS Cloud Formation. So the right answer here is option D, AWS Cloud Formation. AWS Cloud Formation lets you model, provision and manage AWS and third-party resources by treating infrastructure as code. Question number 76. Which task is the customer's responsibility according to the AWS Shared Responsibility Model? Option A. Maintain the security of the AWS Cloud. Option B, configure firewalls and networks. Option C, patch the operating system of Amazon RDS instances. Option D, implement physical and environmental controls. So the right answer here is option B, configure firewalls and networks. Question number 77, which AWS service helps deliver highly available applications with fast failure for multi-region and multi-AZ architectures? 
and the options are AWS WF, AWS Global Accelerator, AWS Shield, AWS Direct Connect. So the right answer here is option B, AWS Global Accelerator. Deliver highly available applications with fast failure for multi-region and multi-AZ architectures. Question number 78. A company has a set of e-commerce applications. The applications needs to be able to send messages to each other. Which AWS service meets this requirement? Option A, AWS Auto Scaling. Option B, Elastic Load Balancing. Option C, Amazon Simple Queue Service, Amazon SQS. And Option D, Amazon Kinesis Data Streams. So the right answer here is Option C, Amazon Simple Queue Service. Amazon Simple Queue Service is a fully managed message queuing service that enables you to decouple and scale microservices, distributed systems, and serverless applications. It allows one application to send messages to a queue and another application to retrieve those messages from the queue. These can be helpful in scenarios where the sender and receiver are not required to interact with each other in real time. Question number 79. What are the benefits of consolidated billing for AWS cloud services? Choose two. Option A, volume discounts. Option B, a minimal additional fee for use. Option C, one bill for multiple accounts. Option D, installment payment option. And option E, custom cost usage budget creation. So the right answer here is option A and option C. Consolidated billing has the following benefits. One bill, you get one bill for multiple accounts, easy tracking. You can track the charges across multiple accounts and download the combined cost and usage data. Combined usage, you can combine the usage across all accounts in the organization to share the volume pricing discounts, reserved instances discounts, and savings plans. These can result in a lower charge for your project, department, or company than with individual standalone accounts. For more information, see volume discounts, no extra fee, consolidated billing is offered at no additional cost. Question number 80. A user wants to retrieve all Amazon S3 buckets with ACLs and S3 bucket policies in the S3 console. Which AWS service or resource will meet these requirements? Option A, S3 multi-region access points. Option B, S3 storage lens. Option C, AWS IAM identity center. Option D, access analyzer for S3. So the right answer here is option D, access analyzer for S3. Access analyzer for S3 allows you to analyze and review access policies for your S3 buckets. It helps you identify and resolve unintended access to your S3 resources. With Access Analyzer for S3, you can review both bucket policies and bucket ACLs to ensure proper access controls. Question number 81. What is the best resource for a user to find compliance-related information and reports about AWS? And the options are AWS Artifact, AWS Marketplace, Amazon Inspector, AWS Support. So the right answer here is option A, AWS Artifact. AWS Artifact is your go-to central resource for compliance-related information that matters to you. It provides on-demand access to security and compliance reports from AWS and ISVs who sell their products on AWS Marketplace. Question number 82, which AWS service enables companies to deploy an application close to end users? And the options are Amazon CloudFront, AWS Auto Scaling, AWS AppSync, 
Amazon Route 53? So the right answer here is option A, Amazon CloudFront. Amazon CloudFront speeds up distribution of your static and dynamic web content such as .html, .css, .php, image and media files. When users request your content, CloudFront delivers it through a worldwide network of edge locations that provide low latency and high performance. So question number 83. Which AWS service or feature improves network performance by sending traffic through the AWS worldwide network infrastructure? And the options are root table, AWS Transit Gateway, AWS Global Accelerator, Amazon VPC. So the right answer here is option C, AWS Global Accelerator. Improve application availability, performance and security using the AWS Global Network. Question number 84, which AWS service provides highly durable object storage? And the options are Amazon S3, Amazon Elastic File System, Amazon Elastic Block Store, Amazon FSX. So the right answer here is option A, Amazon S3. S3 standard offers high durability, availability and performance object storage for frequently accessed data. Question number 85. Which responsibility belongs to AWS when a company hosts its databases on Amazon EC2 instances? The options are database backups, database software patches, operating system patches, operating system installations. So the right answer here is option D, operating system installations. AWS provides the infrastructure and services that include a range of Amazon machine images with pre-installed operating systems. This means AWS is responsible for ensuring that these AMIs are available and that the underlying infrastructure to run these instances is secure and reliable. The other responsibilities listed, database backups, database software patches, and operating system patches are under the purview of the customers when using Amazon EC2 instances. Question number 86. Which of the following are advantages of moving to the AWS cloud? Choose two. Option A, the ability to turn over the responsibility of all security to AWS. Option B, the ability to use the pay-as-you-go model. Option C, the ability to have full control over the physical infrastructure. Option D, no longer having to guess what capacity will be required. Option E, no longer worrying about users access controls. So the right answer here is option B and option D. Stop guessing capacity, trade fixed expenses for variable expenses. Question number 87, which AWS service is a hybrid cloud storage service that provides on-premises users access to virtually unlimited cloud storage? And we have four options, AWS DataSync, Amazon S3 Classier, AWS Storage Gateway, Amazon Elastic Block Store. So the right answer here is option C, AWS Storage Gateway. AWS Storage Gateway is a set of hybrid cloud storage services that provide on-premises access to virtually unlimited cloud storage.
Question number 88. A company plans to migrate to AWS and wants to create cost estimates for its AWS use cases. Which AWS service or tool can the company use to meet these requirements? And the options are AWS Pricing Calculator, Amazon CloudWatch, AWS Cost Explorer, and AWS Budgets. So the right answer here is option A, AWS Pricing Calculator. AWS Pricing Calculator is a web-based planning tool that you can use to create estimates for your AWS use cases. You can use it to model your solutions before building them, explore the AWS service price points, and review the calculations behind your estimates. You can use it to help you plan how you spend, find cost-saving opportunities, and make informed decisions when using Amazon Web Services. Question number 89, which tool should a developer use to integrate AWS service feature directly into an application? And the options are AWS Software Development Kit, AWS Code Deploy, AWS Lambda, AWS Batch. So the right answer here is option A, AWS Software Development Kit. Question number 90, which of the following is a recommended design principle of the AWS well-architected framework? Option A, reduce downtime by making infrastructure changes infrequently and in large increments. Option B, invest the time to configure infrastructure manually. Option C, learn to improve from operational failures. Option D, use monolithic application design for centralization. So the right answer here is option C. Learn to improve from operational failures. Learn from all operational failures. Drive improvement through lessons learned from all operational events and failures. Share what is learned across teams and through the entire organization. Question number 91, use AWS Identity and Access Management to grant access only to the resources needed to perform a task is a concept known as, and the options are restricted access, as needed access, least privilege access, token access. So the right answer here is option C, least privilege access. Question number 92, a company wants to operate a data warehouse to analyze data without managing the data warehouse infrastructure. Which AWS service will meet this requirement? And the options are Amazon Aurora, Amazon Redshift Serverless, AWS Lambda, Amazon RDS. So the right answer here is option B, AWS, Amazon Redshift Serverless. Amazon Redshift Serverless makes it easy to run analytics workloads of any size without having to manage data warehouse infrastructure. Question number 93. How does AWS Cloud Computing help businesses reduce cost? Choose two. And the options are Option A, AWS charges the same prices for services in every AWS region. Option B, AWS enables capacity to adjust on demand. Option C, AWS offers discounts for Amazon EC2 instances that remain ideal for more than one week. Option C, AWS does not charge for data sent from the AWS cloud to the internet. Option E, AWS eliminates many of the cost of building and maintaining on-premises data centers. So the right answer here is option B and option E. So 
stop spending money running and maintaining data centers benefit from massive economies of scale. Question number 94. The company wants to grant users in one AWS account access to resources in another AWS account. The users do not currently have permission to access the resources. Which AWS service will meet these requirements? And the options are IAM Group, IAM Role, IAM Tag, IAM Access Analyzer. So the right answer here is option B, IAM Role. Question number 95, which task is the responsibility of AWS when using AWS services? Option A, management of IAM user permissions. Option B, creation of security group rules for outbound access. Option C, maintenance of physical and environmental controls. Option D, application of Amazon EC2 operating system patches. So the right answer here is option C maintaining of physical and environmental controls. AWS is responsible for maintaining the physical and environmental controls of its data centers, including the security and reliability of the infrastructure. These includes aspects such as power, cooling and physical security. Question number 96. A company wants to automate infrastructure deployment by using infrastructure as code. The company wants to scale production stacks so the stacks can be deployed in multiple AWS regions. Which AWS service will meet these requirements? And the options are Amazon CloudWatch, AWS Config, AWS Trusted Advisor, AWS CloudFormation. So the right answer here is option D, AWS CloudFormation. AWS CloudFormation gives you an easy way to model a collection of related AWS and third-party resources, provision them quickly and consistently, and manage them through their life cycles by treating infrastructure as code. The CloudFormation template describes your desired resources and their dependencies so you can launch and configure them together as stack. You can use a template to create, update, and delete an entire stack as a single unit. As often as you need to, instead of managing resources individually, you can manage and provision stacks across multiple AWS accounts and AWS regions. Question number 97. Which option is an AWS cloud adoption framework platform perspective capability? And the options are data architecture, data protection, data governance, data science. So the right answer here is option A, data architecture. AWS Cloud Adoption Framework, seven platform perspectives are platform architecture, data architecture, platform engineering, data engineering, provisioning and orchestration, modern app development, CI, CD. Question number 98, a company is running a workload in the AWS cloud. Which AWS best practice ensures the most cost-effective architecture for the workload? And the options are loose coupling, right sizing, catching, redundancy. So the right answer here is option B, right sizing. Right-sizing is the process of matching instances, types, and sizes to your workload performance and capacity requirements at the lowest possible cost. Question number 99. 
a company is using a third party service to back up 10 terabyte of data to a tape library. The on premises backup server is running out of space. The company wants to use AWS services with the backup without changing its existing backup workflows. Which AWS service should the company use to meet these requirements? Options are Amazon Elastic Block Store, AWS Storage Gateway, Amazon Elastic Container Service, AWS Lambda. So the right answer here is option B, AWS Storage Gateway. AWS Storage Gateway is a hybrid cloud storage service that gives you on-premises access to virtually unlimited cloud storage. Storage Gateway provides a standard set of storage protocols such as ISCSI, SMB and NFS, which allows you to use AWS Storage without rewriting your existing applications. Question number 100. Which tasks are the customer's responsibility? According to the AWS Shared Responsibility Model, choose two. And the options are establish the global infrastructure. Option B, perform client-side data encryption. Option C, configure IAM credential. Option D, secure edge locations. Option E, patch Amazon RDS DB instances. So the right answer here is Option B and option C.